Yeah. What is up? Welcome. As always, I'm your host. I'm Will Bryant. And I'm back once again with another episode for you guys. This one, I'm kind of excited for this one. Not that I'm not excited for all the other ones. This one was just kind of a kind of a pleasant surprise for me, if I'm being honest. And usually, I'm nothing if I'm not honest on this show. Let me explain to you why. Let me talk to you, yeah, as to why this episode was a little bit of a pleasant surprise for me. See, lately I've been bringing episodes to you guys... Uh, not with friends or coworkers like I normally do. Um, these last couple of episodes have been more with acquaintances, and it's not really a negative that I'm saying that. It's just the truth. I I don't I haven't known my past couple of guests uh, guests. Sorry, I just des- developed a lisp mid show. Hmm. You know, I really wasn't trying to say this this early on in the show, but. For you guys that listen on a weekly basis, you know what I'm about to say. The show's already ruined. Oh, ruined the show. Made it, didn't even make it two minutes this time. Anyways, so as I was saying before, I developed a lisp all of a sudden. I've been bringing you guests that... I'm getting to know at the same time that you guys are because I've only really met them perhaps one time before inviting them into my own home and inviting them into your lives for this conversation that I get to share with you guys. And my guest for this week is no exception. See, I've met him or I met him at the same place that I met my last uh, two guests, Hava and Isaac Knox, I met them through networking events that I've been attending to try to put myself out there. I met Hava at a podcaster's uh, event, and I met Isaac at a comedian's event. Well, I met Liam at that very same comedian event that I met Isaac at, and I, I really I really enjoyed my conversation with him, but it was a, it was a little bit different than I had than the conversations I had with other people at these events. Because a lot of times, the conversations that I have with these people, they feel very networky. They feel like, what do you do? What can you contribute? What do you present? How can we work together? How can we collaborate? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I feel like I'm in a Seinfeld episode. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, me and Hava were pretty pretty open about how we're almost using each other in a way to, to network and, and grow. And, and Isaac uh, and I, I think, had that same type of understanding. You know, he's, we're both young comedians. I have a podcast. He's a freestyle rapper. And, um, you know, this is kind of the game. You know, this is the way that, that we all grow in these very, you know, niche industries that we're trying to succeed in. But my conversation with Liam and... Uh, by the way, I don't know if I even said his name yet. His name is Liam Strumminger. Uh, my conversation with Liam at, at this event was uh, unique in the sense that it just felt like I was talking to a dude at a barbecue or something. You know what I mean? It felt like we just both pumped out some beer from the keg and cheers our red solo cups and we're like, so, sup, bro? And um, it was really chill and really uh, effortless and, and, and fun. And a little refreshing in these events where I think maybe a lot of us feel like we kind of have to be on or something, you know? Um, and so it was pretty much for that reason and that reason alone that I actually reached out to Liam. I slid into his DMs and I invited him to be on the show. I remember in our initial conversations at this networking event, he mentioned how he was a very recent move or transplantee or whatever. Probably could have chosen to word that sentence much better. Let's try it again. He very, no, he moved very recently. Let's go with that. He very recently moved here. (laughs) He just got here. All right. He just got here. That's what I'm trying to fucking say. The dude just got here. All right. When I met him, the first time he had just gotten here about two weeks prior, I think. 
by the time of the recording, it was about a month. And by the time, by the time you're hearing this, it'll probably be about two to three months that he's been here. And not just here, a Bushwick resident like me. So I kind of felt like, oh, here's a new guy, much younger than me, as you'll find out. The son of a bitch made me feel old. And he's, he's new to Bushwick. And, and I had one conversation with him, and I thought he was fun. So I was like, you know what? The son of a bitch needs a friend. And so the, being the amazing, incredible individual that I am, I reached out. I threw the kid a little, little olive branch here, and I said, hey, you got a friend in me. And I said, let's uh, have a conversation. Let's talk. Let's chill. And that's what we did. And boy, am I glad that he agreed to be on the show because um, must admit, part of me was like, gee, I wonder what we're going to talk about. Because I don't know if we got into too much besides just fun conversations in that event. And then I remembered he said something about how he had been directing videos. Not so much being in front of the camera. See, your boy right here, I am a glutton for attention, so I want all eyes on me. Liam, a little bit different. He likes to be behind the lens, prefers other people to be in front of the camera. And that, I don't understand that at all. I mean, who doesn't want to be the star of the show? Liam, obviously, is way more humble than me. Probably cooler than me, too. And you'll see for yourself right here. We got to talking because here's, I, I, here's the thing. I actually watched every single one of the videos that he's ever directed because they're on YouTube. You can follow them or follow him at New Boredom on YouTube. Please subscribe and like all of his videos. Um, and, and they're very silly videos that have a lot of uh, comedic, uh, dare I say, braveness attached to it because it takes a lot to put yourself out there in such silly situations. And um, I think my favorite part of the entire interview is when I ask him if it was true, according to his credits, that he was actually in a Tommy Wiseau movie. And if you don't know who Tommy Wiseau is, or you just don't remember the name, Tommy Wiseau is the infamous director of one of the most uh, beloved bad movies of all time, The Room. The, the Room was so beautifully terrible that it actually spawned a movie called The Disaster Artist by James Franco where he essentially just told the story of Tommy Wiseau making The Room. And I know, listen, James Franco has his freaking problems and not that I condone him, but that movie, The Disaster Ar Artist, <laughs> was such an awesome window into the life of Tommy Wiseau. And the crazy thing is that it, it felt like every scene of that movie was some sort of exaggeration. And the more you learn about Tommy Wiseau, the more you learn that it's not really that much of an exaggeration at all and in this episode Liam himself tells me firsthand accounts of how it's not an exaggeration at all Tommy Wiseau may be one of if not the most unique soul this world has ever seen and my boy Liam here got to be a part of a movie directed written and directed by Tommy Wiseau called Big Shark and um, if the room had you laughing for all the wrong reasons, it looks like Big Shark is right up your alley. Uh, we talk about how how it was working with Tommy, how the trailer somehow was monopolized by Liam, even though he is not the star of the movie at all. Um, and honestly, we just had a really good time as we drank through almost an entire pack of, of hard seltzers, which he wasn't used to because he's more of a beer guy. So he's already trying new things here in Bushwick. I'm ruining him. Ruining him like I'm ruining the show. Oh, man. Before we get to Liam, do me a favor. Follow me on all platforms. I'm Will Bryant. You can follow me on Instagram, on X, on Threads, on Twitter, on Twitch, on Spotify, on YouTube. Please like, subscribe, rate, review, follow all that good shit. It's three words. I'm Will Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T, like Kobe. 
And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy my conversation with the star of Big Shark, Liam Strominger. That clap always kind of makes people giggle a little bit. Uh, well, I mean, the funny one part was that you, you had to wind up for it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't know why I always do that like long wind up, but even when I'm home by myself, I'm like, <laughs> I have to make everything this grand spectacle. I think. I feel like you have to. You should do it. Like, <laughs> From above, at least, to make it like the clapper that they got. That's probably look. So we can tell you already went to school for this shit. Uh, <laughs> you're teaching me how I should be clapping on my own show, Liam. On my own show. I'm so sorry. Um, do you have a speci- ah, specific flavor of this that you want? Well, what, what do we got? So we got. Uh, first of all, they're all real squeezed. Um, <laughs> allegedly, this is Spindrift yeah. Spike Seltzer. I hope it's real. Uh, real squeezed pineapple, real squeezed mango, real squeezed lime, or real squeezed strawberry. I'd say strawberry is kind of calling my name. Oh, wait a second. There's a twist here. The strawberry okay. is actually a spiked lemonade, whereas the rest are spiked sparkling waters. I'll do that. All right. That, that even convinced you even more. The lemonade actually scared me off a little bit. Yeah, spiked water. Well, know. sparkling water. But it's spiked? Like a seltzer. Okay. I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big seltzer drinker, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know what? I actually hit you up to see if you were down to like drink those. Yeah, that's my fault. I'm not, I don't check Instagram cheers, cheers. that much. It's all cheers. good. Right over the computer. Thank you. I know. <laughs> it's funny. I don't know if you remember Hava from, uh, from that uh, networking event that we actually met at, but... She was here uh, just a couple of days ago. That episode will have came, come out, I guess, two weeks ago at this point. The moment that I was going to hit record, I spilled an entire glass of water all over my <laughs> interface. Jeez, dude. And uh, it was a scary moment where I was like, well, maybe this... Interview- you know, I, I was getting a little nervous about these water placements. There's but- a lot of um, irresponsible shit that I'm <laughs> yeah. doing right now. You got a cord right next to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to turn off. <laughs> Let me turn off this fan. I did, I feel like the very last thing I said right before we started recording is I have very little structure to this show, so. That's, I mean, that's good. I feel like all the best podcasts, like, just go off into tangents. That's probably true. That's, that's definitely the type of podcast that I think inspired me to want to even try to do this. Was there any specific one? Um, so I actually know the podcast that got me kind of into the, I guess, the medium or the platform at all. Uh, and it was a couple of, I guess maybe at this point, maybe even 10 years ago, um, I discovered what the fuck with Mark Marin. Okay. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm not. Um, he's a comedian. He's been a comedian for decades. Um, and, uh, it's a platform or a, a podcast that he uses to interview people for pretty much like this, like for an hour long, t- uh, similar stuff like that. Then, uh, I did, I actually have my Rogan phase. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we all did. I, he's <laughs> a little too, uh, bro brogan for me now yeah um but i did i have i had about two years where i i listened a lot to yeah. rogan yeah um i'm, I'm actually a, a big wrestling fan so i listen to some okay. wrestling podcasts too um and some sports ones just to like kind of like i don't watch a lot of I, because i'm a bartender a lot of times i'm working when the games are on mm-hmm. so i don't really get to watch sports as much as maybe i'd want to yeah so i kind of just uh i'm more in the know because of podcasts that, that keeps me in so cool you are you are a podcast guy or so i i mean i've i've gone through like there's only a few podcasts i've actually ever listened to okay um i mean i like i door by the way i just put my drink right next to <laughs> yeah just put it thing. right on top of <laughs> right next to the thing i said i almost drowned yesterday all right but uh you yeah, know i <laughs> I remember I, I spent like the summer door dashing one year oh. and I got really into like the Joe Rogan stuff, which okay. meant I really, I got really into aliens and shit. Like this uh. was before he was problematic. So like, <laughs> I, my friends and I would just meet up at the end of the day after all <laughs> doing the exact same thing and door just, dashing. Yeah. Door dashing and listening to Joe Rogan. This and wasn't, it was New really York bad, yet, right? No, this was in Virginia. Okay. Uh, that's where you're from. Yeah. Virginia? I'm from Richmond. Okay. Yeah. So we did that. And then I got really into this podcast called a uh, come town. Which is C U M? Yes, it's town or yeah, come yeah, town. Come town. Yeah, yeah you have it's to. It's really fucking funny. <laughs> uh, they 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 changed up. Now they're the Adam Friedland show. Adam Friedland. 
That name sounds familiar, but uh, yeah, they're big too, like too... comedians now. Like Stavros Halkias is like huge right now. And yeah, he was on that show. Oh, okay, was um, it um was it like he was a, a contributor? Was it one of his? He, like... So it was like three comedians that would just like talk, and they and never structured. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. They never structured the show. They like it was just like conversations. It, it was really funny. Like one of them just always did like impressions. Uh, so it, I mean, to me, I, I like I would just like listen to that and just like giggle in my car. Stavros lives in Astoria right now, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a uh, he's um he was at the cellar not too long ago, and he had a special that dropped not too long ago too. So he's kind of killing it right now. Oh yeah, he's he's huge. Right um, now. so how did you find the the come the come was it come town? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found it. I found it on YouTube. Uh, like I don't know, maybe like three or four years ago. Uh. They're like just like clips that people were uploading and then yeah. I found it and then I showed it to my friends and then we all got into it at the same time and I don't know they've gotten pretty big recently like they're pulling actual like big guests now okay which is like really like they just had Steve-O on and it was like a disaster really why well their humors are so different like um, Steve-O was just there to kind of promote some shit which mm-hmm. I feel like it's his whole thing right now he goes on like the podcast circuit a lot to yeah. promote shit yeah and you can tell a lot that he's only on there to promote something. Cause What's he promoting now? I don't know. He's, like, selling anything that he's, like, got his hands on. Like, he was, like, I, during this one, he was, like, promoting a, like, like vape that isn't a vape or something. I didn't really uh, understand it, to be okay, honest. But okay. he was he wouldn't shut up about it. And then the whole time, they were, like, just, like, kind of fanboying. So it was just kind of, like, a bad podcast. Yeah. But, like... Uh, they they've had like uh they had like the the head of bar stool on recently that one was hilarious um, they just kind of trolled him the whole time I forgot his name but I know uh, Dave, Dave Portnoy, Portnoy yeah, right yeah yeah. yeah yeah he's I don't know I don't I, really like that guy. I'm not lying neither. I'm not a bar stool sports guy either in general yeah. um there this is already gonna be a second time in like five minutes I'm gonna say this I they're too broy for me yeah too. yeah um I'm not really into that type of humor or content or whatever you know like even him on his like uh pizza reviews he's, <laughs> like he kind of irks me the wrong he's way so, yeah he's such a douchebag but like he like i don't know i think what's funny about barstool i still follow them on instagram because it's just entertaining because like they have they haven't been just sports in like a very long time like 90 percent of their content isn't sports and, oh yeah and the comment section and is always just like, where's the sports? Like, really? It's like, oh, okay. oh, this sport is awesome. And it's all just these like, <laughs> like, like conservative morons who just like still follow this account that are just expecting like. Does it lean like conservative? I feel like fan that's the base? audience yeah, yeah. is like broy, like like fratty douchebag. Like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess. So it's just it's just really I don't know. I I just I just like seeing people upset sometimes. <laughs> You you didn't do a frat, did you? In, no, no. You I went didn't. to Tulane University. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where? Uh, what, what year did you graduate? I feel like it was. I year, graduated right? uh, last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry, this year, but I uh, I try to do a little research on some of my guests when I can. And I saw that your picture was from twenty twenty three, and I was like, Jesus Christ, is he yeah. that young? Is he a, <laughs> yeah, I'm, baby. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm twenty three, so I'm a, I'm I'm a little bit of a baby here. Yeah, right? yeah, I guess. Um, you're how new are you to New York? To to is it it's Bushwick you live in specifically? Yeah, like right in between Bushwick and Bed Stuy. Okay, uh, so like, I guess both. Um, I mean, I love it here. I I've been here for like I want to say like two months. Two now. months. Um, so I'm still like very very early in the process. Like still technically unemployed. Like yeah, yeah. I just I mean I just got hired at a part time job. Okay, and, doing what? Um, I'm gonna be a brand ambassador for a whiskey brand. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, well, do you know? Well, of course you know what brand. Yeah, do, I don't do know. Want to say or? Yeah, uh, Koval whiskey. They're, okay. They're pretty cool. Yeah. They're, uh, do you know about? Like, are you a whiskey guy, or are you about I'm, to learn a lot? I'm not a whiskey guy, but I like. I'm f- so like I lived in New Orleans for four years, and my parents are like. Tul- s- that's where Tulane is. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah, and my parents. Are, I was like, about big to ask, where's dude? Tulane? And if you were about to be like, well, Tulane is the- is Tulane the name of the city? Like or no? Okay, no. at least that. Cause... It's like a small school. Like, uh, is it? I, yeah. If I I feel like if I've known about it or I've ever seen them uh, one of their college teams play on TV, then it's like, like a big well, school. We've recently been playing really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won our like bowl last year, which was. <laughs> Like one of the craziest football games I've ever seen. Okay, and I'm, you... I'm not even into football, but sports at all? Are you into sports? No, I never, sports I never got into sports. Okay, unfortunately. I mean, I, I the thing is, I know how every sport is played. Like, I can watch a game. I know how every sport. Uh, there's a lot of people who say like that they don't know. Like, you know what I mean? 
All right, that's at least a start. You have the concept down for like you know like the balls have to go in the holes. Yeah, like they have to run to certain parts of the field. That's good. Yeah, like I'm not gonna lie. I during the Super Bowl, I was switching back and forth from like with from like Twilight, like with Twilight. Yeah, the, the, the movie. The, yeah, I'd never uh, seen it before. So Twilight. Yeah, I had you also never saw that Super Bowl before, but you know, <laughs> I didn't care either way. Were was, you alone or were you the? Really I was with I was with uh, some friends. Yeah. Were they Were they really pissed off at you for taking the Super Bowl off? Did no, you, no. Uh, they, they, they got pissed at me because I wanted to see the the end of the Super Bowl. This is like a Twilight fan club that you. No, that no. Meets it was, just, it was just, I was just hanging out with some of my girlfriends, and I don't know. That was just Twi- not even. Well, I guess you're too young to even care about the Usher performance at halftime, right? No, I cared. I they. I mean, they cared a lot more than I did. Uh, I, so you saw Usher? Yeah. Uh, yeah is I, that like old school music to you? No. No. <laughs> of course not. I grew up on Usher. We, I mean, like, grew probably up not on grew Usher. up. Like, like when I was. Growing up, I feel like Usher was like I know who Usher is. You're familiar of Usher. (laughs) I'm familiar as you are with sports. You are familiar. (laughs) Yeah, probably (laughs) the concept of Usher. You understand that? I I understand. Yeah, he's a concept. (laughs) He's an entity. Uh, so you were more, you're not a sports guy. You were more of a because you got your degree in what was it? It was uh, communications and. some other uh, digital media production. Digital media production. That sounds very. Uh, it's like very filmy. Yeah. But. Uh, but not. It is. I don't know. I I think that Tulane isn't the best place for film stuff. You're selling yourself really well so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I did a lot of extra stuff like outside of the like, the our restrictions that we were given. <laughs> like we learned every single editing program which i think was kind of a waste of time and i wish i just mastered one of them one, uh-huh. uh but i'm so i'm semi-familiar with everyone like which I'm, ones have you used uh <laughs> the one i use the most right now is da vinci okay i've um, heard about this one uh but i know like premiere i know adobe like, I, adobe is premiere uh i know uh Final Cut Pro. Final Cut. Yeah. I know uh, Avid. That's like the industry standard. And one. you like Da Vinci the most. I love Da Vinci. Why? It's so easy. Well, I literally was having a conversation with someone about this, and they, they're a cinematographer, and I believe that they also are uh, prefer Da Vinci. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like so simple. Like all of these editing programs, because they all like have to be different from each other. Mm-hmm. They all make like. They all change the like location of certain tools. Right, right. They all make it kind of like hidden and like just kind of pretentious in my opinion. Like Avid is so complicated when you look at its UI. Like I it took me so long to figure it out and like once I like made a short film and used it to edit, I was like, I'm done with this program. Okay. Like, I mean like I can use it if if I got hired to to work with it, but like I would much rather like Da Vinci is so simple. There's like three tabs. One's like editing video, one's editing audio, and one's like coloring, and like it's like three buttons, and you can like get a good cut. Like he did also say that he preferred Da Vinci because of what you can do in the coloring aspect. Yeah, of it. the coloring's so simple. Huh. I like you. I, I like I've made like videos that look so much better just because of like the coloring, and like you can just click filters and it does it for you too. Yeah, I mean like I, I taught myself how to color through it, but like I mean I'm t- I'm terrible at coloring, but. So like, for for what you uh, like want to do, do you does it matter? Is there like an industry standard? Like I use Pro Tools for audio stuff because I was always taught that that's the industry standard. Is there something like that for editing? Yeah, I was taught that Avid was the industry standard right now, but I've I've heard it's like changing. Honestly, to DaVinci, oh, yeah. some people are. Oh, interesting. Um, I think someone told me that recently, but I mean, I don't think it really matters to be honest. I think it's if you can make a good cut out of anything if the final product is good yeah they don't, they don't care how you got there yeah exactly like yeah. i mean to me most of the editing i've done is for like my own personal stuff like i like re- like to record like video sketches and stuff so like for me i'm like as long as it looks good to me i'm cool with it like yeah so is that what you uh you mostly learned in school was was the video side of of it's like video uh, like like editing <coughs> being on set uh, writing, I took some. Writing oh, part class. writing too. Yeah, yeah. How many of the you have a bunch of videos that I saw on your YouTube page? Yeah. Uh, 
Were those like student films? Were those th- things I you did on the two, side? Two or three of them are student films. The rest I did on my own. On your own? Are yeah. you so? Are you writing those? Are mm-hmm. you, you yeah. wrote, all of those you wrote and you yeah. directed? Okay. Yeah. And then who are you getting to be in these these little, little uh, films? Just friends. Yeah. So, not no one professional. <laughs> well, I figured, but are they also like uh, aspiring to do something in the? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, some of them are like some some of them are just like people that wanted to be in a video. Um, some are like friends from like my sketch group uh at at school um was that the office hours comedy yeah yeah um, Damn, okay you did your research i did a little research <laughs> <laughs> um what was that like i've never um been in any uh comedy group club oh really anything. yeah it's awesome i i miss it a lot i'm honestly like I'm hoping to find a sketch group uh, in New York to join, or okay. maybe even start one. Sketch group mean like a, like a bunch of people that get together, and w- will you guys write together, or will you guys bring things that you wrote yourselves? It's kind of a mix. Like what we would meet twice a week, so we would come in with sketches pre-written. We mm-hmm. would write sketches together, like outside of it, to bring in, and then you would all like go in a circle and read all the sketches. Oh, and then like at the end of like a certain amount of time, we decided which ones we'd use for stage and then we would have shows uh twice a year uh so was this a group that already existed and you joined or yeah you, all right yeah. Well, i honestly was i joined really late i joined my last year of college do you do you wish you joined sooner yeah that's like my biggest uh, regret it was really fun i honestly didn't know it existed really? <laughs> which oh, is shit. funny how'd uh, you find out um i i think i was just talking to one of my friends he was like yeah i'm auditioning for sketch i was like there's a sketch group here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I I auditioned. Uh, I got it, and like I made some really good friends in the process. So, uh, like, and and it was your senior year at, at Tulane. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you would meet twice a week, share your sketches, and mm-hmm. you had two shows. Mm-hmm. What were the shows like? The shows were awesome. We would have uh, these shows that you never heard of until <laughs> yeah. <you joined. laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're awesome being in it. I don't know. If I'm yeah. <laughs> uh, but like we would have like four shows, four or four to six shows. I, I honestly kind of forgot per uh, like semester. So like over the course of a weekend, it would just kill your entire weekend pretty much. But okay. it, it was really fun doing it. So like we would have two shows a night. Um, like the first show, you'd be like anxious and like, you know, you'd get on, you'd you'd do, either do well or do bad there's typically around like f- we would have like maybe like 30 to 50 usually but like our last few shows had like 100 to 200 people like that's it was, a lot 200 might be too much but there was a lot of people even 100 probably around, around 100 i'm impressed that you even got the the four the 50 or 60 or whatever because that's a, yeah like i mean a lot of it is show. like friends and stuff the problem is like we would have them on like fridays and saturday nights mm-hmm. so like to me, I'm like, I wouldn't want to go party. to it. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to go to a collegiate sketch group. Yeah. Like, So your audience is full of nerds and losers. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and a lot of friends. I mean, but the thing is, like, Good friends, we would encourage people to, like, drink before the shows. And, oh, okay. like, the later shows, like... <laughs> The dr- the later the show was, the drunker the audience, and therefore like the f- like the more it laughs get we would get. For you guys, yeah. yeah, and we would drink in between shows. Like <laughs> at, we weren't supposed to drink before the first one, but by the second one we were always drinking. And then like the last show, like some of us would be like hammered for it. Were you one of the hammered guys? Yeah, there was one sketch I remember. I was just like like smiling my entire way. <laughs> I, I I was just I think I like improved a little bit too much, but I uh, I mean it made it really fun. I was gonna ask, does it does it negatively positively affect the performance do you think i think it positively i mean if you're like if you don't know your lines and you're like an anxious person but if you enjoy like it probably will affect it but if you Mm. enjoy like being on stage and like know the scene and what it's supposed to be like to me it only enhances it like i was i like had to do some embarrassing shit on stage so like i to me i was it like made me like more comfortable doing that and also like I got more into character with it, so like what embarrassing shit? Um, there's, there was one where if I, you were I was too drunk. Do you remember what you did? <laughs> no, no, I never got hammer hammer. <laughs> I would just get like, I don't know. I there was one that uh, I was a vampire. I wrote this sketch and it performed somewhat well. I don't know how how great it actually was because I really just wrote one joke for it and I was like, I'm gonna write a whole ske- uh, sketch sketch around, around this. this. <laughs> it was like a it was like this joke where it's like these people are at a at a like at a party and one of them's just like uh <laughs> he's like uh 
He's like, yo, I, I invited my friend to this party. Uh, I hope you don't mind. He's like, yeah, of course. And he's like, yeah, but he's like trans. And the guy's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, like that's that's totally cool. Uh, like it's 2023. Like, uh, why would I have a problem with that? He's like, yeah, but he, like ever since he he like transitioned last September, like he's been like really annoying about it and then the guy's like yo you gotta chill like <laughs> we're at a party right now like <laughs> like you're killing the vibe and then the guy's like is like you'll see man he he fucking sucks so then yeah. so then the guy like comes out and the guy was me because i was the only one comfortable doing this <laughs> so I, come out, I come out in a, like a vampire cape and i'm just like i just got back from transylvania like so it's, <laughs> So it's like the the joke is that I'm just an obnoxious vampire who just became a vampire. So like but then like the problem is then there's a whole like 2 minute scene that I'm just running around being a complete like jackass like on stage and like by then like the the big joke was that my reveal so that is just me being an idiot and like to like a few half ass jokes about like garlic and like me being attracted to some girls like like blood uh <laughs> uh, so it's like so it's like it's just like it was just like weird shit like that and then uh so i had to like completely like run around like jumping on stage like tr- pretending to bite people like this didn't get you in trouble on a college campus it did it did I like after i left. talked about this a little <laughs> yeah bit, i so might have i'm like wait i'm remembering uh this vampire bit <laughs> yeah. um and yeah you told me it got you guys in trouble didn't it yeah the there was a there was another there was an improv group at school that I think reported that sketch. Uh, Wait, which you is, got reported by you got snitched out. Yeah, by, yeah. It, so is there a rivalry between the sketch group and the? There improv was that group? year. I, apparently, they're they're cool now, but I don't know. The improv group was like, "There's this there's this new guy on the team." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't like him. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there was like to me, I was like that was a safe joke, like because. Well, the, or the, the 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 scene closed with me getting kicked out, and then the person's like, "Well, I guess I don't fuck with trans people." <laughs> but it's like she's not talking about trans people, you know. <laughs> it's too close. See, that's the thing about uh, you know, especially on a college campus, there there yeah, needs exactly. there needs to be no context. You know, it's if there's mm-hmm. one line that can be taken out of context, then yeah. there you go. Let me know if you ever need a. Oh no, I'm, I'm good right I'm now. Gonna, but... I'll do my bartending over here while while we're doing. I mean, this. it's crazy because we had we had like bits that were turned down like me and my friend both like i remember would like turned we, down by who uh like the group for okay. being like too controversial too much. or too so weird. you're the the pusher you pushed the boundary yeah now. yeah i tried to <laughs> like immediately like i was i pitched like a really uh i thought it was so funny about like uh it was like a boston marathon uh sketch which is probably probably too much but <laughs> it was like about like it's about like a guy who was like who came in last in the Boston Marathon <laughs> having like an after party and you can't really tell if he knows whether or not like what happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everybody's like crying and like like but it's like he's always like I don't know. I, I always I always tried to like whenever I did a risky sketch, I tried to make it like still like caring for the event or whatever we were uh-huh. I was joking with. But yeah. like so like people were like being like sad and stuff and he was just like like throwing confetti around and being like being like everybody ate my dust and then like he had like i don't know he like proposes to his wife in the middle of the scene he's like now's the good time is that do you feel like uh do you keep these like ideas around because you feel like you're they're still good and you yeah yeah i mean i still have it like written down somewhere and i have like a notes page full of ideas that are probably unusable when did you start writing sketches um I got into sketches in high school. My friends and I would like, it, it all started with these like health videos that my friends and I made in, uh, in high school. We like, we, we, we like were in like a comedic health videos. Yeah. We okay. were in like a health class and we, uh, I remember we were like, uh, <laughs> we, we decided it'd be funny if we made videos instead of just like a poster about okay. this like book that we were reading. Yeah. And excuse me. And, uh, and we, uh, so we like. Just recorded these videos, and the first one we turned in, the teacher was like, uh, "This had absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with the, the book." <laughs> so, she, so she gave us like, so like, and we were like including teachers and stuff, so it was like funny. And uh, so then we like, we got like C's or D's on that, and then we were just like, "All right, whatever." And then we we got another assignment. <laughs> and then, 
<laughs> they were like, hey, can we do another one? And then she was like, all right, but please try to stay focused. So this time we just like... You had to show this to the class? Yeah. Okay. So this time we went complete like vlog style and just like, just like, there's like a Krampus con that was happening uh, in our town. In Virginia? Yeah. <laughs> which we just stumbled upon. Krampus con. Krampus is but, like the evil... Like, yeah, he's uh, like the evil Christmas yeah. uh, character. I heard about this recently, not too long ago, actually. So why do you got... You're, you have a... Your town's obsessed with Krampus? No, I don't know where the fuck it came from. Wow. Where, what town in Virginia? Richmond. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to be like some some fucking... No, no. So I'm not Richmond, you know, one of those... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Listen, you're a guy from Virginia making trans sketches. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You are. It looks like you are that person. No, I think I'm progressive. <laughs> you, that's why you moved to Bushwick. You're like, I need, yeah. I need to... Uh, but, uh... Yeah, no, so we were, we just, like, kind of just filmed a bunch of, like, weird shit going on there, and then we would, like, implement, like, sketch-like videos in it. Like, we would write some jokes and then film it. Like, there was a whole thing about, like, there was a whole bit, like, about, like, uh, it was, like, all about, like, friends and stuff, so we had, like, a a shot of like our friends hanging out without us. And then we had a shot of one of us just like pounding like sodas, like in, <laughs> in the back of an alley and like slamming them on the ground. <laughs> and so it was just, it was just like really unstructured. There was like 20 minutes of me just falling. Uh, and what did this have? This is a hell for what? Like, what was the, it was like assignment? a 10th grade health video that, but the assignment was like, write about, uh, this chapter in this book. And every, <laughs> it was like us. So that like this, these other groups of like, this like one other group of girls who just made a poster in like 20 minutes. Okay. And we were spending our whole weekend doing this <laughs> and we, we presented it to the, to the class. I remember. And like, we had like some of our friends come in from other class to watch it, which was funny. And then the teacher like had no idea how to like also another weird thing about health teachers have you ever like i don't know if you had a like health class when you were but like every health teacher no, looks like they just one. watch their entire family just get brutally stabbed like <laughs> they're always like whenever they're talking like, really i feel like a health teacher was always like also a gym teacher or something I, for us they were like straight health teachers well, and they would did, always you, talk you about went their to trauma. virginia so I yeah, yeah. Was, uh... like so she's so she sees this and she's like i have no idea how to grade this like I don't, this has nothing to do with anything so she sends it to another teacher it gets passed around to another teacher the sooner or later the entire school has seen this video including all the teachers my friend and i like we got in like trouble my friend like we somehow we didn't get suspended for it it was that bad there is, I don't... Or controversial. My friend, like, when he edited it, he, like, kept, like, throwing in, like, the, like, like bleeps. Oh, so, like, okay. he would, like, bleep out. Like, it just looked like we were just cussing up a yeah, storm, yeah, yeah. even though we never were. Okay. And there was just, like, a bunch of other questionable stuff. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it was just, like, it was a very, like, iffy video. <laughs> I remember I was, like, people were, like, I can't believe you turned this in. Like, there was, like, <laughs> us, like, like, imitating, like, smoking and, like, drinking and, like... For a 10th grade class, that was, like, a little much, I think. Yeah, but like the, it was like being shown in like like my friend said he like showed it to his like science class and they were like or his like biology class and they were just playing it. Uh, and this is in what class. this is what started your path. Yeah, so I was just like that was a lot of fun. So then I started making like videos on my phone with, with a few of my friends. Um, those were really dumb. Uh, and then like I don't know, I got to college and I was just like, all right, I kind of like doing this, so I'm just gonna do it some more. But you never really, like, um, wanted to do, uh, I guess you said there's an improv group. You didn't, you st steered clear of improv. You weren't really into the comedy thing either, right? I did, I did improv. I, I auditioned for the improv uh, group, oh. actually, one year, I think. And uh, my friend and I just were not good about that. We, like, really? went to a bar before and then showed up, like, 20 minutes late. Uh -huh. And we thought it'd be funny if we You like just... doing things uh, dr drunk, I'm saying, huh? <laughs> <No. laughs> As we are drinking during the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the one who bought that. <laughs> uh, but we, like, we were just like, all right, well, let's... Uh... Because it was her idea to do this. And then we, like, show up 20 minutes later. Then we were like, oh, we're a package deal. Like, you, no. you can't separate us no. from this audition. Like, <laughs> So then we, like, I, I thought I did really well in the audition. And I think it was just because we were just being really annoying about it. <laughs> just, like, yeah. being late. Like, kind of being, like, uncaring. Coming in as a package deal <laughs> yeah. didn't hurt. Uh, didn't help either. Um, the, but, sc the, sketch, um, the sketch club was your first time on stage? Yeah. 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 Did you? I mean, other than, like musicals when i was a kid you did musicals as a kid we had to 
Did our school like forced us to. Like like plays? Yeah, I mean, I was like probably eleven years old. <laughs> Cause I've done like mu- like songs, but n- or or um shows as like a choir. Yeah, but, but I've never had to act in a musical play. Well, I don't know if it was music. I, I'm probably hyping it up too much. It was like, I don't know. It was just like little stage performance. Like we had a theater class that we had to take in like middle school. Theater? Wow, no. Yeah. yeah. Richmond, Virginia. It was a weird school. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was a really I weird was school. no yeah. It, I, there was no theater class. Our fucking like homeroom teacher was teaching us like a song because he's like the spring show is coming up. We have to get you to perform a song or something like that. But and um, yeah. and I went to relig- a religious school, so we did have to like do choir at like uh, Easter or some shit like that. Okay. But yeah, I'm always I'm whenever someone's like, Oh, I was in the school play, like I've never been in a school play and I'm always kind of mystified by that. So when you said musical, yeah, part of me was like, Oh, I found one. I found someone because no one in unless you were in the theater club in high school where I went, like you were you didn't have to do any plays or anything. Like yeah, that. I mean I think the audiences were just like our parents. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like crazy. Yeah, of course. But you know, that's still like frightening for a little kid. I don't mm-hmm. know, I was I remember I was Caliban and the Tempest. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah, the Tempest is that, is that Shakespeare? Shakespeare? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. And Caliban sounds like an important character. He was a monster. So oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how important he really was. <laughs> so yeah, they had you play the monster, and um, you got drunk before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <really>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was hammered, dude. I was, snort- I was snorting lines, dude. I- <laughs> Did whip it. I was shooting up skag, bro. <laughs> Oh man. So um Tulane University you had um the you said uh the office hours comedy sketch club. That's where you found some of the people that were in your the videos you directed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some you, of the newer ones. You yeah. prefer I mean I haven't uploaded in like a year, but you preferred being behind the lens as opposed to in front of it? Um uh I like both, honestly. Oh like, really? Selfishly like it's it is fun to be on camera. I okay. just hate it's just like the actual like directing a scene when you're in it is really difficult. Like I do like holding the camera okay, because I can guarantee that it's like the right angle and the right shot. There was a while there, like while I was going through the videos, I was like, did I invite the right person? I was like, because like, I don't recognize anyone in these videos. <laughs> yeah. And then I realized like halfway through, I was like, oh, he's directing them. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I literally went back to your Instagram. I was like, no, I know this is the guy that I thought <laughs> yeah. was coming. And, and yeah. I, I went back and was like, okay. So I, that's when I started... Um, I guess wondering if you were more of a, of a behind the scenes kind of guy. I think, I, I mean, yeah, I'd say I'm more behind. I, I, I've been in a movie, which is cool. So uh, I saw you with directed by uh, Tommy Wiseau. Yeah, yeah. All right, that bugged my mind. Like I, it kind of like threw me for a loop. That uh, Big Shark. Yeah. Okay. Can we? T- good. Thank you for bringing that up. We have to talk about that. How the hell? Did you get in a Tommy Wiseau movie? <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, one of my friends from one of my classes uh, in college was, like hit me up one day, and he was like, "He was like, dude, I'm only telling you this because I feel like you're you're the type of person that would like understand how cool this is." Like, he got a PA gig somehow um, on the movie, and he was like, "And I was like, dude, you gotta get me on there. Like, that is my huh. dream. Like, I'm obsessed with that guy. Really? Yeah, I was a I was a mega fan. Of like, the room, or? the room, like Neighbors, which is like, uh, I think it was Neighbors. That's what it's called. Uh, it's like this. Oh, it's like <laughs> this, like uh, show that he made. Um, okay. I don't. I'm not familiar with. Na- I'm, I guess I'm not an avid. It, it's not a big one. Like, okay. That one didn't get that many views. It's like really poorly structured. Um, For anyone that's not sure, let, let's just uh, uh, put a little uh, explanation into this because I'm sure there might be someone listening going, what, "Who the fuck is Tommy Wiseau?" Um, he was maybe more. He he was probably brought to further fame with that Matt Franco movie. Right? James. Yeah. Uh, James Franco. Yeah, James yeah. Franco. Uh, Matt Franco's I think his younger brother or whatever. Uh, what was that James Franco movie called? Uh, the Artist? The, the, the Disaster Artist. The Disaster Artist, yeah. right. And he's, it's literally him playing Tommy Wiseau during the making of mm-hmm. The Room. Yeah. And The Room is this movie directed by Tommy Wiseau. I'm assuming... And written, s- yeah. Written and directed by and him. And funded. 
so everything if you had to <laughs> and des- acted in if you had to describe the room <laughs> it's the best worst movie ever made that's what people call it so yeah sell the audience on that that's listening and watching right now that have never <laughs> even heard of this uh sell them on the room well it's a movie so bad that it inspired a book and a movie about just how it was made i feel like that should say <laughs> enough <laughs> but like basically this dude is like an alien like <laughs> like there's so many theories about how he got like the money to fund this yeah. how like he exists um he's probably european he actually claims he's from new orleans but that's true we, and hilarious we too. asked him a few questions and he didn't know anything that's about funny. new orleans so <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that at all <laughs> but uh he, I don't know. I, I mean, I spent like the day with him. So like, and I've had many interactions with him since. So like, he's a homie to me. Like he loves yeah. me, which was, I got really lucky. He hated one of my friends. Um, so first of all, why do you hate your friend? Uh, he kept fucking up, I guess. Or like Tommy's version of fucking up, which is like anything. So, yeah. so but he loved you. Yeah. Why do you get along with you? So I think I was just really excited to be there, and like I was just playing along. I like I I got really lucky that day. Uh, we we met him like the. I'll just explain the story for sure. We we met him the day before at like a premiere for the mo- for the room. Um, oh, like because he he, he tours like, it. Yeah, he yeah. does like uh, like watch parties with him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So we we went to that and we met him. Is this when you say we the uh, your buddy that was a PA on the show or on the on this movie? Yeah, right? okay. yeah. So he introduced me to him. He was like. Yo, Tommy, I'm going to be there tomorrow. And then he was like, oh, bring your friends. He didn't say it like that. I don't know. <laughs> you know how he talks. But uh, he was like, he was like, yeah, bring your friends. And I was like, fuck yeah. So then and he was like, oh, and wear something uh, like plain if you want to be in the movie. I was like, of course I want to be in the movie. So Wait, I. So he was, you met him at a uh, showing of The Room. Yeah. But what, so then he's, he's like also, behind like plexiglass, like <laughs> he's like behind like a bulletproof like <laughs> why glass. what why he wears like a, three masks and like two gloves and what it was like COVID stuff oh, okay, I guess okay 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 but like oh, oh, oh. does he still do this, this is it normal for yeah him? yeah this is normal and really? then you like just stand in front of the glass and just like take a picture what with him. <laughs> that's the most Tommy Wiseau thing. <laughs> yeah yeah but then you said. You were told that if you wear plain clothes, you can be in the movie. Yeah, so I was the only one who listened, I guess. The movie meaning Big Shark? Yeah. So he was filming and showing the room? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't know how. It was also funny because he asked us for a green screen. He was like, does your school have green screen? Okay. And then we were like, uh, we were like, yeah, probably we can get a green screen. You need anything else? And we got like lights and a bunch of equipment. Oh, my God. And we were like... And he we, like, talked about it afterward. We were like, if we didn't, like, <laughs> if he didn't ask us that last minute, what were they going to do? Because yeah. they were so underprepared. We go to this, like, the next day we're at, like, a boxing gym. He only rented out the ring. He didn't rent out the whole boxing gym. So they were just training boxers oh in the corner. God, that's and, like, hilarious. Tommy would just yell at this, get into, like, fights with this guy. It was so funny. Um, so he's very, what we saw in the room is very... Uh... If you've seen the disaster artist, it's spot on. Really? Like I that was the one thing I was like shocked by. Like I expected him to be somewhat like like I all love the Tommy. I love that guy. Uh he's really cool. Um and he's actually a really like friendly guy. Like every time I've seen him since, he like crawls under the plexiglass, gives me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> like like he, he's a dope dude, but I, but uh, but as eccentric as that movie portrays, yes, that's yeah. uh, that's like, what he is. Yeah, he's like off like six Zans like at all time. I don't know. I don't know if that's a lot. I haven't done Zans, but like probably like that. That's a good amount. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Damn. Because I know half a Zan puts. Well, I'm a. I don't do it at all. So I took. If I take half, I'm sleeping until like eight p.m. the next day. Um, you mentioned boxing. Yeah. Ring. Are you in the ring? Yeah, I'm in the trailer. Yeah, so I I watched the trailer and I I must say I was not disappointed at all. It's amazing. <laughs> the funniest part is that's the entire trailer. Yeah. And the movie, I'm in it for like two milliseconds. <laughs> like that scene, that scene is like it's like the funniest thing. It's like they're sitting at a bar and the guy's like, Yeah, yesterday I saw this guy get eaten by a shark. And then the guy's like, What, where? And then he was like, at a boxing ring. And then they just show me getting eaten like 
like that. So like, <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's what I. That's it. I've got. I was. I as you saw a little bit or, or realized, I did do a little research on you just to, to know what, what I'm talking about, and I come across this fucking trailer. Yeah. And I'm like, he's the fucking star of this movie. I'm not. Because <laughs> you're, not in, you're in the trailer's only a minute long. You're yeah. in like every second of I, this trailer. I know. I like. I'm if hype I, about that, but <laughs> to me, this t- movie is mostly about this boxer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's training for like the fight of his life. And then very randomly, with zero explanation, gets eaten by a shark at the very end. Like, that's... Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the shark is not... They're not in the water. No, the shark... Well, we forgot to mention. There's you guys no aren't ocean. in the water. There's no ocean. <laughs> it's... Uh, There's, you guys are... You, you turn the corner of a city block. Yeah. And a shark is following you guys it's it's so funny there's attacking. a scene in the movie where uh because i actually saw the movie and there's a scene where they're being chased in a like down bourbon street and okay. like a, they're, they're in a truck or something or they're in the french quarter not bourbon street they're in a they're in a truck and th- this guy's like they're being chased by the shark this guy reaches in the back for a shotgun and the whole scene is them just being like, put the shotgun down. Why are you playing with my shotgun? And they're getting mad. I'm like, dude, there's a shark. Like, you, you clearly see the shark. Like, That's like cl- classic Tommy Wiseau dialogue. It's like, none of this has anything to do with anything. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. But oh, it's man. worth seeing. It's, it's, watch Big Shark if you can. Do you know where we can stream it? If he comes to your town. That's the, really? only, that's the only way I have. That's the only way you can see it. <laughs> Oh man, and then I'll get to meet him uh, through plexiglass. Is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I, since we're now in Bushwick, if he comes to Bushwick and I go with you, might he come out of the plexiglass? Maybe. For us? Yeah. La- la- the last time when I saw it, uh, when I saw him last, he had me like speak at the event, which was wow. Yeah, which was weird. He's like, "Do you guys remember that guy in the, the thirty seconds?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, not even, <laughs> not even. He was like, he was like, it was like, this is, and I was like, Liam, and he was like, <laughs> he was like, you were in big, and I was like, shark. Like he, he still had to talk. Like he can't. <laughs> he only lets he, when he when you're being interviewed by Tommy Wiseau, he only allows you to answer in one word or yeah. less. You might have to get another one. Yeah, yeah. Do you want the same thing or do you want a different flavor? Have you tried the other ones? Or I did a, I've done the pineapple and the mango. How's the pineapple? It's good. It's nice and refreshing. All right, I'll try nice and refreshing. <laughs> nice and refreshing. All right. I'll be a good bartender and open it up for you. Thank you. Uh, here, let's Appreciate do a nice little cheers again. Cheers. So this is a big get for, for me on this podcast. I have the star yeah. of Big Shark. The trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, if you, I will I will put the link to the trailer on the show notes because you guys have to, if you have a minute to spare. It's I, worth it. It is, I promise you. It is, I, I literally laughed out loud um, at, the, at this trailer. I don't know if it was Tommy's intention to have me. Does he get that I, he's a... Uh, I think at this point he understands he's that he's He's in on funny. the joke now, yeah. right? I think, but also I think that... But has he embraced that? He embraces it in the sense that he wants people to laugh, okay. and he edit it, and he edits it in a way that, like, whatever gets the most laughs, he'll, th- like, he goes with them it. on. Okay, uh, but I still think he's trying to make a movie, right? And like, I remember, like, I was talking to someone there, like, is it still funny now that he's in on the joke? And I'm like, yes, because it's still Tommy Wiseau writing, directing, and trying to make a movie. Like, yeah, it's gonna be funny no matter. Like, there was no sound. Like, no, there's no sound in certain scenes. There's no music ever. There's no credits. Like, jeez. So there's. It's still like a hilarious mess. Could he be? Is it possible that he's actually a different level of like comedic genius, and that this is his goal? Not. Not for my knowledge. Yeah. I think I think he. I don't know. Meeting him and talking to him, he's like very much like who he is. Like he's he is exact like Tommy Wiseau. He he's not he's not putting on a, like an act like. Oh, cause I, and it's I, like it's awesome. Like part but, of me is like, like he, is he the greatest trick ever played on us? You know, like is he is? I don't know if you're familiar. You're a youngin. You know, I'm 36. Okay. I've got a couple of years on you. I don't know if you're familiar with Andy Kaufman because he, he's, yeah, he's yeah, even before Andy my Kaufman. time. But he's a you know comedian that almost never. Yeah, but Kaufman would he, he would still break sometimes and show that he's that being exactly. That like yeah. that's why is is Tommy Wiseau perhaps the greatest of all time. 
I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I don't. Like, I don't, I just, my friend, I just discovered a Neil Breen, who is like honestly to me like the like also another Tommy Wiseau. Okay. Where he also makes movies, also writes, directs, and he actually has credits this time. But it's all <laughs> Neil Breen, Neil Breen, Neil Breen, Neil Breen, Neil Breen. <laughs> and it's so funny. Uh, check out Neil Breen if you have the time. Yeah, I'm not too He's, familiar. I, uh, I, I forgot that his like his famous movie my friend and i just watched it and he like he's like a computer hacker that isn't revealed to be a computer hacker until like two hours into the movie <laughs> <laughs> and like it literally ends with him revealing secrets but he never he's just like everybody's being exploited and then like it just shows a bunch of businessmen killing themselves and I, and that's like the happy ending <laughs> <laughs> so like, these are your inspirations as a director. yes exactly <laughs> I see Neil. Uh, he looks like a weird dude. Yeah, he's um, he's weird. Yeah, with, with very dyed hair. Neil Neil Breen. Yeah, actually, him and Tommy Wiseau both very dyed hair. No, Tommy Wiseau still has yeah. black hair. I mean, Tommy seems more natural. At you least think from, so? from what I saw. I, as natural. I mean, it's a little greasy, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So so you you came to see the 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 movie in plain clothes apparently. Yeah. And then. How the hell did you go from from watching a movie? Was it like in a theater or something? Or yeah. How the yeah. hell did you go from there to to be boxing in a gym? So he told us, uh, like, we got like the call time and stuff like for the next day, and then we showed up. I wore like gym shorts and a t shirt, and basically, I w- They had me first as just a normal PA, and then they had me shooting B roll. Okay. So I was like, as I was, but as I was setting up the camera, someone comes up to me. They're like, "Yo, Tommy wants you." I was like, "Tommy can have me." So I like, <laughs> so I like, I walk over and like Tommy's like talking to all the uh, the boxers that were already cast in this role. <laughs> they were like, one of them like drew drove all the way from like I think like Metairie, which is like far. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it wasn't like, <laughs> like like these people like audition they got the roles and like basically this guy just he sets me up he was like he was like he had me like take off my shirt it was a little weird <laughs> and i remember we like <laughs> we like stood like in a line no but really <laughs> we like stood in a line and he like was like examining our muscle tones and like had a camera out his like phone out and was like f- like and i was like Whoa. i was like that's probably too much for me but i'll go with it <laughs> uh but I don't know. I wasn't even like in shape. So it was your body time. that got you the role, as you're saying? I or? wasn't even in shape. I don't know what they saw. <laughs> but then he had us like audition on the spot, and this kid was like really upset because he had the role already and already auditioned. And then I took it from him. Wow. And uh, but <laughs> you <laughs> so stole I, the man's job. Yeah. But like the guy I was boxing, this dude Raul. Shout out Raul. He was a he was a he was a cool dude. I uh, he like. <laughs> He was like training for the role. <laughs> like he, he like ha- had been taking like boxing lessons. Like and we were boxing each other, and I just had no idea what I was doing. I was throwing out like side fists. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. As I was watching you in the trailer, I was like, "Is that Liam?" Yeah, I had and, no and idea then, what I was doing. And the boxing, I remember thinking like. Well, that was yeah. That's not 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 exactly uh, good <laughs> technique there. <laughs> yeah, I had no technique. I, uh, I also thought it was really fun to watch him go down at, uh, from a fake punch. So even though I was supposed to be losing, I just kept like <laughs> fake winning because I thought it was fun. Uh, yeah, I just pressed, I was like, damn, I've never been in a fight before. Like, I just pressed play on the trailer again to to see this thing and um. Yeah, I, your <laughs> your punches. You even taunt the guy. And tell, yeah. You tell him to like come come get you. this. So yeah, so that was a very quick scene, but it's the entire trailer basically. Is, is yeah, the two I don't. Of you boxing. I think it was all they had filmed before, and they were just like, let's just release a fucking trailer. That's fucking funny. That makes a lot more. Because there's a too. first trailer that none of the shots are in the actual movie. And is that you running from the shark at the end, or is that that you had nothing to do with that running from the shark? Uh, scene running from the shark yeah i'm gonna assume that's not you but probably not we did film a scene of us running from the shark i was like did he forget yeah i was like did he forget i just died Um, (laughs) you come back later but i don't know what they did with that footage yeah literally the freeze frame of like when you have to when you go to imdb and you have to press the play button on the trailer the the 
frozen frame is a ref like this and you like this. Yeah. <laughs> looking like you just knocked someone out. Yeah, the, the ref know. was was a good guy too. He was. Yeah, it was a it was a fun day. I don't know. Did you get paid for this? Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I have a sign check somewhere by Tommy Wiseau. I probably lost it, honestly. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he just I mean he he's given me so much like signed stuff since. So. Oh, really? Yeah, there was, at the end of the shoot, we were all like wearing Tommy Wiseau clothes and <laughs> Because we were like, like filming merch? like promo, yeah, or... we were f- filming promotional for like his uh, his brand, I think at one point, and which is called probably Tommy, Tommy Wiseau. Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, and he always, he always says like he's like you know love is blind, and then like <laughs> so, like I think that's his <laughs> like if you watch the end of the trailer, it's just a bunch of like shirtless dudes wearing his underwear. Uh, <laughs> he probably thinks he invented that phrase. Too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I tried to copyright. Yeah. I don't know why they don't give me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, he was like, "You can have whatever." Like, he was like, he was like, "You can have the clothes." So then, like, so but my friend was had his backpack, on, like Tommy's backpack on. He was like, "You can have it." And then my friend was like, "Dude, your computer's in here." <laughs> like, oh shit! <laughs> like, he had all of his shit in his, in his bag. He was just giving it away. <laughs> Uh, I would have been like, cool, and just fucking walked out with Tommy Wiseau's computer. I know that would have been that would have been like fucking nuclear codes for me. <laughs> oh God, Tom, thank you so much for the Tommy Wiseau. I did not know that there was that much um, meat on the bone when I saw that little tidbit <laughs> in my my stalkery um, research on you. Actually, it's funny. I accidentally did do the most stalkery type of research with you because normally like when I have someone on the show that there's a lot for me to just work with like in terms of like their social media or whatever yeah. you it's just a very normal out with my friends social media yeah, like, yeah. Right. And I saw the YouTube link so I watched a bunch of your videos and, and uh, which ones I literally I'm pretty sure I saw all of your videos okay I'm not gonna did, lie did you like any of them some of them I feel like I can't watch again is like, it too cringy for you yeah there's some that I'm like I could have gone a completely different direction there's because. some that made me laugh out loud and I'll tell you which ones there's some that I was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> is going on um like memories confused the shit out of me. yeah well memories that, there's kind of a story with that one i like i don't get that one <laughs> at all dude i don't know what the fuck happened I was, at the end i was in a i was in a film class at school and that well, was a what is the one. water about at the oh, end? Yeah. i don't know dude i'm telling you i watched your videos i don't know what the i i saw that video and i was like i should cancel I think so. <laughs> we were supposed to do a non-narrative film. Okay. Uh, and I was like, "Wait, that was that a school?" Uh, yeah, that was a school. I thing. swear to God, I thought to myself, "I I think this is definitely a school project," yeah. and that the premise was like, there was for, no premise. I was well, like your parameters or your rules for the the video. Or? So the the well, the premise was it was a non-narrative, and basically when she showed us in class. And I wasn't a big fan of the professor. What so. do you mean non-narrative? Like you're not allowed to tell a story. Yeah. Either. So I was like, that's bullshit. So like, that's what I kind I kind of figured. The reason I was so confused is because yeah. this was what was he was supposed to do. Like that's uh, excuse yeah. me as I apply some chapstick uh, <laughs> for the rest of this interview. Um, um, yeah, I I remember thinking like, I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on well, that one. So he, she like gave us this assignment and I was pissed because I was like, I just want to film something funny. Like, yeah. I just want to make a funny story. And then they were like, and then she was like, she was like, here's some examples of some non-narrative videos. And she showed us this one video of just like someone running a goddamn sink for like 20 minutes and like showing like rain and, and like a shower. And I was like, this isn't good. Like, yeah, this yeah. is dumb. And she was like, this is what I want from you. And I was just like, and then she was like, it has to have like one theme. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to fucking troll the shit out of her. So I, I, I had a sketch that I wanted to film, which was about a guy who goes through a house and he just has terrible memories of the house. And just like, he's just it. like, oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I filmed that and I just like, just made my friend just do a bunch of weird shit. I thought it was kind of funny. And then at the end, uh, my friend just, ru- one of my friends just runs into the apartment, like 
just drips water. I'm just like, I'm going to say that it's about water. <laughs> it's like, so it's more just like I made that mostly just to troll my like okay. professor. So the joke wasn't really the video. The joke was me showing it in class because the people in my class thought it was funny. Did it like, land as a joke? Or, yeah, because yeah. she had me explain what it was about. And, and I was you're just like, like, it's about water. I was like, yeah, it's just about water. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's clearly not about water. <laughs> like, so she was like, she was like, yeah, but what, what, what themes were you using? I was like, the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I just heard my, my doorbell ring, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure my girlfriend has keys. She's not locked yeah. out. She, that's well, it sounds like, like she's home. Oh, okay, cool. Then maybe that's like Amazon or something. Oh, yeah. you know what? I do have the headphones on, so I guess you should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone's been uh, been in there for a while. <laughs> God, I hope it's my girlfriend. <laughs> we just come out, everything's gone. <laughs> it's gone, my, my, except my turtle, basically. <laughs> Um, all right, good. I had no idea. I was completely oblivious to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, she gets the door. Then. Uh, or whoever's burglarizing us gets the door. Yeah, yeah or they take the door. Yeah. <laughs> and the door's gone, too. <laughs> yeah. um, the guy that was in Memories, I think, he, um, was he also the same one that was in, um, was it Inspector Cheddar? De- or Detective, Detective Chambers. Ch- Chambers. That was another school one, too. That it one, was? Yeah. Well, that one I'm more proud of. That one, that one, that one, I don't know why, but it really made me laugh a lot. Yeah. Um, it's the same dude in it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that's your friend. Uh... Yeah, he's like one of my best friends. I okay. Love that guy. Yeah. Um, is he still back in? In is it in New Orleans? He's in Atlanta right now, but he's about to move to New Orleans. So okay, yeah. Because that's the thing about a school like Tulane. Like a, it's it's such a, a I don't know if it's a big school literally, but it's a very well known school. I would say. Yeah. Um. So you probably become friends with a lot of people from all over the place. Or are they all it's like Loki, like it's all just like preppy Jews. So really? it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm Jewish, so I can say you that. You can but say like, that. You're allowed. Okay. I'm a preppy Jew. Uh, <laughs> it's like all like New York, Chicago, and Cali people. So, oh, really? Yeah, not I, a lot of Southern people. There's like maybe two other thought. people from Richmond. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So are you? Have you connected with any Tulane people uh, since you've been here that are? Oh yeah, plenty. Yeah. Like a lot of my good friends live here. Okay, cool. Tulane, so. All right, so it helped you with your transition. A little oh bit. yeah, it's been a very smooth transition. Oh, that's cool. Did you, are you living on your own, my see, We just played footsie. I told <laughs> no, you it's okay. that was more like easy. <laughs> I almost touched your thigh there, and he was um, uh, roommates right now in Bushwick, or are mm-hmm. you? On, yeah, or did you know I got them? One. I met him like randomly on Facebook. I'm always terrified of that. I've never lived with someone. Well, you got to talk know. to them before. Uh, how'd that go? It's good. We're I've been we've been hanging out. But how'd it go? Like uh, like the did you like Facetime? Uh, before, oh yeah, or? we Facetimed. We like had a Facetime just to see that we weren't like insane weirdos. And yeah, shit. yeah. Uh, and then yeah, I That's mean, brave. Do we, have... we were both desperate enough. We were just, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but like we've run into no issues. He's a cool guy. All right. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to get sidetracked from the videos. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but the sandwich one uh, kept. It, it, I kept thinking this is so dumb. <laughs> yeah. But it kept making me that you wrote a, uh, a sketch where uh, someone is just trying to eat a sandwich that he just took his time to prepare. Yeah. And then I guess his wife or his girlfriend it just interrupts him to no end. Mm-hmm. And at some point, the two of them are interrupted by a fucking like. Speaking of being robbed, they, <laughs> yeah. someone starts robbing them, and then the only thing on on uh, the dude's mind is being able to finish his, his yeah. sandwich. Yeah, I um, like that one. What? When you? How do these sketches start? Is it like one concept in your head that like you then work around? So or? I wrote that one with the guy in the video. Um, we like the robber. The by the way, that but oh, both was the it a robber, choice that he was wearing Birkenstocks that day? Or... <laughs> he just always wears Birkenstocks. <laughs> I, I feel like he's in a ski mask with a gun, but he has Birkenstocks on. <laughs> that is the problem. That is... <laughs> I swear, I wanted to ask you specifically: was that a in the script or no? That was just we. I, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I honestly didn't realize that he was. Oh, that's one of my. The it's one of my favorite parts of the whole video. I was like, he's fucking. Wearing Birkenstocks. If that adds, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Um, yeah, so uh, like something like that. How does that... What's the first seed of that? Uh, well, we were trying to trying to write and film every week, and that oh, wow. didn't work. As you can see, that's like one of the last videos I made. Uh, um, I did see you, were, you put them all around the, the same... Yeah, in like two I, month, I got into three, a... Two-month period? I got into a, a good groove, uh... <laughs> my like last semester of college of like filming and 
it's just like once I moved to Atlanta for a bit, like it was harder to actually because I didn't have as many people there, mm -hmm. so I didn't really, I wasn't able to get stuff done. My that friend was... and I wrote a mini series, but we never filmed it. I definitely want to ask about that, but that's just, that's something that impressed me about the videos was I was just like. Oh, this guy has a lot of people that are just ready, like willing to be like to do this, you know, like, yeah, I didn't really grow up in a group of friends where we're like, let's, let's record something on T like to put on TV or something like that. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. so it, it, it seems to me pretty cool, at least that you had people that were, were just ready to do it, that were willing. And that's why I asked if, if, um, these were aspiring actors or well, some, I mean, some people love being on camera. Like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's, I find it like. If you offer someone a role, they're always going to take it. That's true, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, and, like, it is fun acting. Like, even if you're a bad actor, I feel like <laughs> sometimes it's hard, I honestly think, to be a bad actor. Like, there's... You're like, so naturally good. If the scene... Well, there's two types of sketches, and it's, like, character sketches and, uh, like, scene sketches, where it's, like... The Bring joke it down. Bring of the it down scene... down for me, because I don't know what that means. The joke of the scene is the what's happening. So, in that sense... That was the sandwich one is kind of a mix where it's like the joke is the what's happening to the guy that he wants to eat a sandwich, but also the joke is, is it's like a character in the sense that it's like he's more into the fucking sandwich than anything, and like that's what his drive is. Okay, but like I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, so it's either the scenarios like what it's makes like this, you laugh. either the scenario is goofy or it's like a person, person is in a it? goofy person. I see. just in like in existing do like, you find yourself um gravitating towards one over the other yeah i think i'm more of a scene writer um i would like to get more into characters i'm writing a feature right now with one of my friends like a feature meaning like a movie like yeah. a full, full length movie mm -hmm. okay yeah i've never done that before so to me like i've str i struggle a lot like making the scenes like crafting jokes for the scenes has been easy but like making my characters non caricatures has been like the hardest part oh interesting uh, so like i'm trying to get more into like really like thinking about like like character drip like arcs and like do you find that writing characters in a sketch is different than cover yeah film they're more of a character yeah because it's caricature i should say in yeah. a sketch right because they 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 tend to like act more with the scene like mm -hmm. so it's like they can say stuff like directly reacting where it's like in a feature you want there to be development so it's like I can't just have them be a goofball the whole time or else they're just going to be like, you know, unlikable. Or right, annoying. right. Yeah. They're just going to have like one tone throughout the whole Yeah, show. exactly. Sure. Like we just, my friend and I, the biggest issue we've faced is that we wanted this guy to be like a likable idiot, but he's mm -hmm. too much of an idiot mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's like, we can't develop this guy. I love so. that you're really good at the idiot part, but you're bad <laughs> at the making him likable part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Why is this character getting drunk before he does everything on the show too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, How's that coming along? It's it, good. I I I, I real I have some really good jokes. I think. Do you guys actually stuff. like get together to? Write? Yeah, we're getting together tomorrow actually to write. Um, yeah, I mean we're right now we're working on the beats. We already we wrote out the first seven pages, but okay. um, we kind of realized we were getting a little ahead of ourselves. How so? Um, just because you're not supposed to just get in and write. Oh like, no. Like, you can do that, but it's, like, you kind of need to know what's going to happen. Oh, Because then, like, sure, yeah, to yeah. me, the writing is the easiest part. It's just, like, coming up with what you're going to write is, like, the real hard part. Got it. Like, I wrote... I've, I've written two other, like, big scripts before. Like, I wrote a pilot on my own, and then I wrote a spec script with one of my friends. Oh, um, what, did, what was the spec script? Well, well, I guess both are technically spec. Like, a spec script is, like, an original script, so it's, like, uh, I wrote a spec like tv show uh on my own just like my own like original idea and then i wrote oh, so, oh okay because i've heard of a spec script where like you write a script for a show that already exists yeah that's that's what it tends to be so okay. i wrote i wrote an episode of curb with one of my friends oh by the way speaking of curb did you hear who yeah. just passed away yeah we are recording this um uh what's in it uh, is it richard uh Richard, richard lewis richard lewis i'm not calling him richard klein that's, a, that's <laughs> someone no. else richard lewis literally passed away like Two hours before you got here, dude. I know. It's so I had no sad. idea. I saw curved. it in the bathroom. I forgot. To oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put a somber note on our um, star, but no lie. That movie, I mean, that show started in two, the year 2000. I actually figured you might be too young for the show. So I don't know. No, I love that show. You love Curb. I think it's one of the best written shows ever, honestly. Well, it's also barely written, right? Like, Yeah, it's, I mean, it's straight up improv. Yeah. Most, but it's like the jokes to me are so clever. Yeah. And like... Something like that is something yeah. would you love to like be a part of? Something? Oh, of yeah. course. That's yeah, I would like love uh, that. 
Did you? Did you? I mean, there's probably less of a writers' room for that, but I mean, I I love that show. Something like that. How about? uh, Did you watch Seinfeld? I feel like I'm gonna get hate for this, but I I like I like Seinfeld. I never got that into it. Really, I, I can't stand laugh tracks. Okay, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I am definitely uh, I don't hate you for that take on it because uh, you are younger, and I do think that laugh tracks are pretty cringe now. Yeah. Um, I don't like any new sitcoms. What about Sunny? Um, so that's the thing. Yeah, I don't know if that's a new sitcom. Well, hold on, you also interrupted me. So what's that? Sorry. I was gonna say I don't like any new sitcoms. And then the rest of that sentence was gonna be um, that have laugh tracks. Okay. That are on like network television. So like if Do it's those a- even exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, dude. They're, they're all the ones that we don't watch. Like the <laughs> ones on NBC and CBS and ABC. Oh. Like don't forget, like Big Bang Theory w- was a thing, oh, true. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, you know they're. Young Sheldon. I don't know if Young Sheldon has a laugh track, but you know, shit like that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I'm not too big of a fan of now is I, I love the office. It's like one of probably Mm -hmm. my favorite of all time, but, um, there, I think it's enough with the mockumentary style. It's I feel like it's a little, um, unoriginal. I think it's a good setup for just like casual comedy. Like, Sorry, for like casual. I think like, <laughs> uh, um, what we do in the shadows. Is oh a, God, you're right. Because I do love th- that. They they kill it. Yeah. with that stuff. And I honestly think like shows like that and like Trailer Park Boys. Like I think I saw an episode of that. Not my style. When they incorporate but, okay. shit like that, like and they do it well. Because like half most of the time in those shows, maybe they that's what it is. Cameras. Maybe I just don't like bad mockumentary style. Like uh, I'm like I'm not too big on this new uh, Abbott Elementary show that came out. I've heard good things about that. I it I when I watch it, I'm like I see it, I see the substance, but like I don't know. I, maybe I'm just too much of a stickler about like maybe I love The Office and even Parks and Rec too much that uh that the the genre of it feels like when did it become its own genre like that's that's the, probably around probably the office right around the office yeah. time yeah but um that wasn't like a at the time that idea was more novel mm-hmm. it was much more new now um i mean maybe with someone your age that even that that 10 year 12 year difference between oh, 13 year difference between the two of us is enough for the mockumentary style to just be something you grew up with yeah, I mean, if you if you watched all of my videos, my like capstone like short film was I tried to make it like a mockumentary style. Capstone, which one? Was it was like one? the first video that I uploaded. Uh, but I mean, I didn't like how it came out. But I'm trying to remember, I because I definitely I did see. Oh wait, yes. Um, uh, I'm gonna just check it up right now. But I do I do remember there was one where it looked like you were being followed around and telling some type of. St- oh wait. Oh no, that might have been. It might have been a different one, but what I was mean, it? Me, let's plug your YouTube. We're gonna plug your shit at the end, anyways. Okay. But let me just search for right new, bo- some... new boredom. New, <laughs> yeah, new boredom. God, I hope that's my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, that's the that's the the mockumentary that I that I remember. The heist. Yeah, to um, me, I think if you can, I didn't. I don't think I did it well, but mm-hmm. I think that if. To me, I think the existence of the cameras being there, if they get fucked with, I think it's hilarious. Like, to me, I wanted the joke of the of the thing to be these people can clearly not afford to have cameras. <laughs> so, like, I, I, had, I went through so many ideas in my head of, like, how to do it. Like, originally, one of the endings I came up with was that the stakes of the heist were going to get lower and lower and lower. <laughs> where they were just, like, the end was just going to be them, like, trying to steal credit, uh, credit card information from, like someone at like starbucks (laughs) uh just to pay the camera crew yeah uh and then like i had a joke in there where they like show up to an arms deal and the cameras get shot at because they're like (laughs) filming an arms deal (laughs) um and i was like i think stuff like that is funny because it's like that's the thing that no one ever acknowledges in those shows it's just that there's the cam- fucking cameras, yeah, there's cameras following cameras. you around. Like that so, is objectively weird. Your your mention of what we do in the shadows completely torpedoes my my point about not liking mockumentaries because I do I do love that show. By the way, Always Sunny is also one of my favorite shows of all right, time. Great. So so yeah, I'm right with you on that one. But famously, no laugh track there, and and it's not on network television. It's on FX. So I don't know if that that for some reason yeah that's fair. It it, it matters to me. Um, 
it just seems like the network television shows are just always it, it's like those are made for like 50 60 year olds that like just don't stream anything anymore or whatever because I, I don't know if you've seen yeah. the bear that to me is like the, i love the bear yeah. yeah to me that's the best new i mean there's drama in it but that's the best new comedy i think that we've had in i don't a know while. why people think it is not funny i don't know you don't think it's people... funny oh I, I i laugh i mean i definitely i've cried my eyes out too but yeah I, I've laughed they like won a show. comedy award I yeah yeah which they i did. was like i don't know i wouldn't call that a comedy really i, I don't know i've definitely laughed enough for it to be that i get it you know i mean to me that's like saying like the Sopranos is a comedy. Like, there's funny elements. In I the guess Sopranos, you're right because I've definitely laughed at, laughed at the Sopranos, but I don't call that a comedy. Yeah, it to can me, be it's very more funny. Of a drama. Like, the bear is stressful as shit. I feel like if yeah. you're thinking about a comedy, you're watching something that you can relax and just giggle. To, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I don't. That's that's a good point too. In the heist, you had the weirdest casting <laughs> choice. It's the only v- video you have where there's like. Someone way older than you. Yeah, guys. yeah. We actually had to pay her. She was an actual actor. I figured. I wanted to know the story behind because you hire like she someone that awesome. looks like a hooker. That she like well, a, she was playing a hooker. An old like yeah. I don't mean like you hired a hooker. <laughs> yeah, we hired her. <laughs> <laughs> like she looked and not a not a nice one, not a good looking one, like an old rundown crack core looking hooker. <laughs> Um, how did you come around? Uh, my friend found her on like Facebook Marketplace. It was just yeah, that she was easy, only huh? twenty bucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I we did find her on Facebook, which was interesting. Uh, but she was awesome. She was like way too down for anything. I remember <laughs> the, we like had we had like these two. It was her and like one other person that applied, and the other one like just was like this normal looking lady. She was very excited, like a great actress. And then we had this, in, and like in this scene, like I wrote a like a fake scene for the interview because mm-hmm. I realized she barely talks in the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, I was like, all right, just like hold out a pen, pretend to smoke it. Like your character smokes a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we had that interview, and I was like, yeah, that, she was good. And then we had this interview with this lady, and she was just like, what's up? <laughs> and it was like, she thought that like she wanted to be a teacher at Tulane, so she just thought that oh, like. Wow. That was gonna help her chances. Which I was like, <laughs> was the, the stu- Oh, it says yeah. Student I was like, I don't think it's gonna help you in any way. <laughs> um, but it's gonna uh, hurt your chances. <laughs> yeah. But she was like, she was like, yeah, I, I quit smoking, but I can get back on it uh, for this film. I was like, dude, do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please do not do that. Uh, method, and she was willing to do that just for the video interview. The I was method like, acting for a student film. <laughs> oh man! I was like, please, I do not want to like, like be responsible for your nicotine addiction. What was it about the fraternal love video that got you eight thousand views? With? I don't know. It was, really, it just it's all just hit. old people in like uh, Brazil or some shit. Really? Like, that's, yeah. That it hit though. Huh? That one. I guess like people, I don't know that. I mean, I like, I kind of like that video. Yeah. My friend, I, I think the script is, I think a lot of the case with a lot of these is that the script is better than the actual video. That's fair. Um, cause a lot of, you know, just like having a lack of actors mm-hmm. and like using your friends and also just like, like with that, we, we were on a real time crunch. Like yeah. my friend and I wrote it and filmed it and edited it in like 24 hours. Wow. That's pretty impressive then. Yeah, I mean, we were proud of ourselves, but we were also like, this is kind of like a wasted script. Oh, Because it was really funny. Yeah, but yeah. It, like, didn't come out great. And there was, like, a few shots that, like, didn't even make it somehow. Like, the camera just wasn't even recording. Oh, no. <laughs> so we couldn't go back and reshoot it. <laughs> like, there's one shot. There's, like, one joke where a guy is doing push-ups and, like, uh, the frat character, like, puts a cigarette out I remember out that part. That was in there. And he, like... He like I think like lights the cigarette while he's like doing yeah, push-ups yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, like it's the joke is that he he wouldn't be able to do that. Wait, it's in there. It is, but the scene of him doing push-ups isn't like the shot. Oh, of you're him right. Actually... Yeah, I thought that was a choice that you. Guys... No, it wasn't. It was, a, <laughs> it was a very. I was so pissed. I was like, you only see his hands. Yeah, and then the the uh, the. I guess whoever's on top of him is like has his leg on top of him while he does the push ups. <laughs> yeah, we had moving. a shot of him doing the push ups with the leg. That's hilarious. I literally was like, all right, I guess they're just not going to show <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Here. <laughs> and we just didn't realize we ha- didn't have it until like way too late. So, so at this point, you guys were, were doing, you said a video every what? Every week? Every two weeks? I, I mean, that was my plan. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I don't, I definitely didn't do that. I tried to, I, so all these videos are posted like within about, Hey, look, my cat was in the closet the whole time. Jeez. 
<laughs> she's gonna try to get out and be like, oh damn it, you're stuck. So I guess baby, now bro. we know that it wasn't her outside. It wasn't the cat outside. No, right. but she's in here now. Um, so most of these videos were posted like within a two to three month period. Yeah, were they all made within those two to three months? That's yeah. a lot. Then, yeah, that's a that's lot it. of work that you you churned out at that time. Yeah, th- thank you. <laughs> what was the uh, well? The thinking was that you were gonna have this going on for a while, and yeah, I, was, I to me, I like get into habits really easy. Did so. you get burned out real fast about? No, it? I loved it. It oh. was really fun. It, it's just I graduated and just life got in the way. Yeah, and now I'm guessing you don't have as many people around you. Yeah, I mean, I've that. written a few scripts that I'm ready to film that I want to film. Oh yeah. Um, I just like I don't really have the resources right now. I was gonna say, how do you? What's the next step? What do you? How do you go about that? I mean, I have an apartment, so I have a place to shoot, mm-hmm. so I can start writing things that I can just film in my apartment. Got it. Um, but that's honestly a recent development. Okay. Um, and then I I have friends, so it's like once I like, I guess honestly the only thing holding me back is myself right now. I guess so. you have like uh, your own equipment, or would you? Have yeah, to... I have a, I have a camera set up. Um, um, and most of your scripts are they like? Uh, do they involve multiple characters or do you have anything yeah. that you could I mean, I've do yourself? Think, I've been thinking about trying TikTok. Uh, oh, you don't have one. I have TikTok. It's just like all very like ironic and like like half of my videos I just made at like 3 a.m. like really manic with one of my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I, I'm considering getting back. Like my friends and I actually in college did try to do a TikTok. Like we met like a few times a week to like make some videos and we we turned out like three or four before one of us quit and then it was just me and my friend and we would argue about sketches oh, wow. so it That's just funny. didn't it just didn't work i mean because a lot of i have a, you have a lot of videos here that are like about three minutes five minutes and you yeah know, like with the, maybe just a couple more like yeah you have plenty of three minute videos like i feel like would work for yeah the tiktok there's... medium and one of those i was my maybe my i don't know why but i, I laughed a lot at the standoff that's my favorite one. Is it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that one was. I thought. I thought the uh, <laughs> the guy holding you guys up at gunpoint was really funny. He had a funny accent, and just the idea of <laughs> in it's literally just two people being held up at gunpoint, and one person wants to protect the other person so badly he keeps he keeps jumping in front yeah. of him to save him. Yeah. To me, that's like a <laughs> key and peel sketch. It felt like it because yeah. the thing is, the guy never shoots the gun. Like every time he jumps to like protect him, the guy's just like, I didn't shoot him. I didn't pull the trigger. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing? Um, and then of course the, the payoff at the end, the ending uh, definitely made me, I was outside, I was out walking to get us the beer we're drinking and I cackled at the ending. So, <laughs> That, I one, appreciate that, that, that one that one got me um but yeah that's like three minutes right there like i you you could probably take a lot of these and just repurpose them maybe edit them a little bit in terms of the framing to put them on TikTok. yeah no? there is some moments in that i could cut down i i like <clears throat> i used to meet with like a comedy writer uh mm-hmm. who, he was like he worked on like mad tv uh oh cool he was like the head writer there so i would like we would go over videos and stuff. Uh, that was out. Did you ever? Oh, see I love that? Mad TV. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. I, I like grew up watching that. That's probably oh, what wow. got me interested in like comedy oh. when I was a kid. You're more. Are you more of a Mad TV guy than an SNL guy? So I low key think uh, Mad TV doesn't hold up as well as oh, old really? SNL. Why? A lot of a lot of the old sketches are kind of like a little racist. Okay. And like a uh, little like question, like little like on the line. Yeah. But like, I mean, some of the classic ones are still funny like mm-hmm. i don't know um i mean newer snl isn't that great the last the shane gillis one wasn't that bad honestly i saw some of it i was working during the night of um but you know working at the cellar gillis uh hosting was a pretty like everyone was talking about it it was mm-hmm. a pretty big deal um what do you think of his monologue you heard you hear people are saying I, he bombed do you agree? i don't think he bombed yeah me neither but also like he could have bombed because you know that they wouldn't like show it if he bombed like they yeah, definitely like the, yeah. it felt like a laugh track. No way, you think so? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you did. know that like it's all like everything's fake on that show. Like they they have like signs telling you to laugh. They're, oh really? Like, I, don't, I mean, I know there's an audience, but I don't know. They if have being... the, they have the mics right next to people who are supposed to be laughing. Like, oh okay, interesting. Have you gone to a recording? Or you just, no, I you just, just know this. Yeah, I just know things. Oh, okay. but, it's just inside information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, I want to uh, go. I um, I've he was saying during the monologue like he was finish a joke and outwardly say oh i thought that you that was gonna do better or like i thought that yeah would be funny. i think that's why people think you like yeah he, he could have avoided saying that if he didn't i think he screwed Might himself up yep same do you want to try a third flavor sure now? why not uh le- real squeezed lime yeah or mango uh oh i'll try mango Let's see. 
Actually, let me let me get the line. Let me get the line. Fuck it. I mean, he used a lot of material from his stand-up. Cheers. Um, did he, yeah, yeah. I get. I also think he didn't really like. Like he should know his audience. I think that's like the number one thing in comedy is knowing your audience. His and audience he, or the audience, or the SNL well, audience. Like, he already has a big audience with like people who are really into comedy and like younger, like, you know, like his audience. He has a big audience, but it's like I think when you're on SNL, you're trying to get like a bigger audience. You're trying to get like the older crew, and he, he was doing is, jerk off jokes, which like right. I think that that might be what. <laughs> it's weird because I was talking to my friend about this. Um, See, Gillis was at the cellar a couple of days, like warming up his monologue before he went on SNL. And I heard him say things that I remember thinking like, oh, he definitely can't use that on NBC. And he used it? No, no. And then oh. so like I, it was a mixture of, I think, maybe, maybe some people felt like he, and I think this, this whole he bombed thing is more of a narrative by. Yeah, I don't think he bombed. I don't think so either. Um, I think it's just websites that already don't really like him for for other reasons. Um, yeah. That that wanted to find any reason to write something negative, and I don't think he did himself any favors by saying things like, "Oh, I thought it was funny." Okay, well, whatever. And, yeah. And, um, because it, you know, maybe it is a laugh track, maybe it is the mic laughs, but it didn't come off like it was bombing on TV. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Maybe it sounded worse. They were um, funny jokes. Set. I just yeah, don't I think they belonged on SNL. He wasn't as funny as he could be, mm -hmm. which I think is part of the being on network. It's late night, but still network television. Um, but I still don't think he bombed because of what you said. Like He's still a funny dude that had funny jokes. Yeah. I just, listen, he didn't go up there. and It wasn't uh, a Chappelle or Eddie Murphy monologue uh, that had people really talking. It was. It just it happened. And that was yeah. it. I mean, he did say like "gay and retard." Like, I, the, the, yeah, the which, R word that he said. Yeah, I, I'm a little, I was a little surprised about that. He did have a gay joke, which I was surprised he touched on. I, I was curious to see if he was just gonna avoid cancelly type of yeah. things. I mean, I, to me, those jokes were kind of like those weren't. They were kind of safe jokes. Like, yeah, I didn't think he was really crossing any lines, mm -hmm. but also like, I don't know. You only have like. One real shot at, you know, hosting SNL. Yeah. And I'm like, I, if I was in his shoes, I would have used cleaner material. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because, mm. like, I don't know. My grandparents are watching SNL, and uh, they're not going to hop on his bandwagon if right, they see right. what he, like, you know? That Well, but then what happens if they did, and then they put on Glorious Dogs or something? Or, or uh, is that what his special well, then is they, called? Well, then, then... That is true. But it's, <laughs> I mean, that is a... That is a really good special. I really like. I loved it too. Yeah, it was great. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like you can like. I showed my grandpa some some of those jokes in okay. Inglorious Dogs, uh, whatever his special is called, and he laughed. So like, there is like I feel like, <coughs> but it's just like, they're not gonna do that research and get and he's not gonna get those plays and those views mm -hmm. unless like, you know, unless they hook him immediate unless he hooks them immediately. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think he did a good job of doing that. I mean, the sketches were good. He did. He did He's sell a, a show. He sold a show to uh, to Netflix like a day or two later, too. Or they announced yeah, it a day or two yeah. later, too. So I'm excited about that. It's called Tires or something. I actually I definitely just took my sock off in the middle of that sentence. But anyways. Did you ever watch um, Gillian Keeves? No. It's like his, uh, he has like a sketch show online. Like Oh, yeah? There, There's some really I've actually ones. never heard his podcast. I've never, uh, I, the only thing I've ever seen is his stand-up. And then I've gotten, I've, he, before he moved to Austin, he was at the cellar a lot more often. Mm -hmm. So I've had the... I've been lucky enough to see him on stage a, a good amount. Um, so I'm familiar with his comedy, but I, um, his pod, I, I, clips online of podcasts, really. And I did not... Oh, wait. I did see some clip of him doing a sketch, and I forgot what it was about. There's, a, there's like, Sleep Cop is one of his best ones. I don't think that... Did he do something, like, Colonial or something like that? Am I I'm confusing that? But yeah, I guess now I, I know where that. Jokes, I don't know why I never thought about where that came from. So that makes sense. Yeah, he's he's really funny. I think. Are you into comedy? Even though, like, yeah, yeah, like you like stand up comedy. I like stand up. Yeah. Who are some? Is he one of your favorites? Who are some of your favorites? I think he's one of the best right now. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like new. Um, my favorite comedian's Norm Macdonald. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love. Oops. I was obsessed with his podcast. Speaking of podcast, yeah, I think he had I never a really to funny it. I one. Probably should have. I mean, he would just troll guests. I, I, I like shit like that. Like, yeah, he was a, a complete like, like, and they had a joke section at the 
this uh, at the end of uh, at the end of each show, mm-hmm. and they, he would he would read like terrible jokes <laughs> that he clearly read like wrote. In, ter- in terms of trolling, I mean, one of my favorite not even Norm Macdonald clips. It's one of my favorite. I feel like all of us have these clips that live rent free in our heads that we will like YouTube once or twice a year just to watch again and yeah. laugh all over again. And for me, I feel bad for my cat. I might let her out soon. <laughs> for me, one of those is I love if you've ever seen the clip of Norm Macdonald on the Conan O'Brien show. Yeah, yeah. When the chick from Melrose Place is <laughs> yeah. trying to promote a movie with Carrot Top. Yeah, yeah. Was, and hey. Norm completely hijacks yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good one. <sighs> and um, it ends with the with the punchline of uh, he's everything this poor woman is saying. Yeah, he's wait, turning it. I know what you're about to say. He's turning it on this woman, like just making it like. It's the it was the hardest ever thing for her to, to do to be on that show and try to promote it, and um, at the end Conan's like, "Hey, right, well, what's the name of the movie?" And she goes, um, oh, "It's a Chairman of the Board." And Conan's like, "All right, cool, great." And he looks at Norm like, "Yeah, do something with that, you fucking freak." Yeah. yeah. And like Norm takes like two beats and goes, "Is board spelled B O R E D?" And uh, yeah. even the woman that was a star of the show was breaking down in laughter. Um, Did you see the the? I think it was also a Conan where, where they had like the snowboarder uh, girl on. No. And they showed like a she had like a terrible injury. And they, okay. They just showed her like tumbling down this like mountain, <laughs> and he was just like, you know, it actually looks pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, had he was great like, usually jokes you, pi- you picture female athletes like big. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the clip that was? Uh, it it kind of went viral again um, recently through social media, but it was a clip uh, from when he was on um, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with Jerry yeah. Seinfeld. Um, I think I saw that. Yeah. The, it, it was about Bill Cosby. Oh <laughs> yeah, the hypocrite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that to me, that's the perfect type of uh, of Norm joke where he was saying how uh, I was talking to Pat and Oswald the other day, and he said uh, he thinks the worst part is the hypocrisy of the Crosby <laughs> things, and he's like, I don't agree. And stupid side, but he's like, oh, you don't like like thinking like he's about to say something profound or whatever. And Norm's like, no, you know, the, to me, the worst part was the raping, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the lying, the scheming. <laughs> Um, and then, he was yeah. like, "I put it, I put hypocrisy like way." <laughs> <laughs> he had that hilarious joke that he told on Conan O'Brien um, about meeting his new neighbor that works at the the, the the he called it the School of Science or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he works; he's a professor of logic or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. that one, I'm not even going to try to tell. But that's a, it's, that's the such moth a, joke too is legendary. The moth joke. That, it would take too long. It's right. like one of those like because he that, was I'm a master of just wasting people's time. Yes. So like that joke, I think is the best one of those where yeah. it's just like. Probably like a ten minute joke. I've told people to joke. <laughs> Let's not do it. Here, but I'm, gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna it do it now. But like, <laughs> do you know? Do you know why he got fired from SNL? Yeah, because the OJ stuff. Yeah, I, I I know everything. I'm, Jeez, I'm, that so I um I'm a big fan of this series called Dark Side of Comedy. Um, I got into that because I I watched this one of my favorite series of uh, right now is uh, it actually is going to premiere in about a week. Um, called the Dark Side of the Ring, and it's like okay. it's like. That was a vice. It is a vice series about like, you know, the darker stories behind professional wrestling, which I'm a huge fan of. And that was such a hit that they came out with Dark Side of Sports, Dark Side of Comedy. I don't really give a fuck about the Dark Side of Sports one, but now that I work at the cellar and I mean, uh, I just got into to being a comedian myself. I have watched every episode of like two or three seasons of Dark Side of Comedy, and on the latest season they had Norm Macdonald. Okay. And uh, I had no idea that he was such a degenerate gambler do you yeah, know about this yeah. he yeah. he do you know the, the story about him throwing money in the in the beat in the ocean no so this comedian that he that he was with at the time at like an atlantic city show tells the story about how he would just go straight to the poker tables and not leave not he wouldn't even go to his room he'd be there all night make a bunch of money lose a bunch of money or whatever um and there was one time where he was like trying to like quit gambling where he made he either just did a show that paid him a couple of like made like ten grand or or sixty grand something like that you know in between there, 
um, I, he either just did a show that paid him that or like brought that amount of money with him to Atlantic City when he was going to do a show. And instead of going to the tables, the slots, whatever, he went to the Atlantic City beach and threw the 10K, the 60K into the water. And his friend, the comedian that's like opening for us, like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, it's exactly what would have happened in the casino. I'm just getting it out of the way now. Damn. And that's how big of a degenerate gambler he was. I mean, at the time of his passing, I believe he was um, either living with his mother or his mother was living with him. Like, he just lived in, like, a condo or apartment in, in L.A. Because like, he spent all of his money? Because he lived, like, so much, like, within his means because of because he didn't really grow up saving throughout his career. Damn. He didn't, like, he wasn't, he wasn't one of these comedians that, like, did enough throughout his career that was living you know past comfortably like to you know like where you you'll see like comedians that were big that like if you if you were if you're a comedian like that like you live you're not really struggling you know like yeah. you should especially a norm mcdonald like yeah, he, he should be struggling yeah yeah I, don't, um, I just i just read his book uh, yeah the not a memoir okay it's a really funny book and when did he, he come he out like, with that he, uh pretty I don't. I don't know. Honestly, I, no, <laughs> you were about to like bullshit. Not, yeah, I was about to bullshit. <laughs> 20, 2013, Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that that book is like you can tell he kind of has like a pessimistic view of his, of himself, where he's just yes. like he's just like like I haven't lived a good enough life to really write a book. So the whole book wow. just reads like a stand up act. Mm. But to me, I mean, th- it's the funniest thing I've ever read. Like, wow. I was at, like out loud, like laughing out loud, like the entire read. Okay, Which I think I think if you like comedy, you should read it. It's okay. like one of the best books. Ever. He's one of the most respected comics. Yeah. around he's a. There's a couple, excuse me. There's a couple of comedians out there that I I I like to say, and that's not me, but like a lot of people say, he might not be as famous as a Chris Rock or Kevin Hart or Dave Chappelle, who I love. Yeah, but he's the type of comedian that he's probably your favorite comedian's favorite comedian. Yeah, exactly. and that's what Norm Norman McDonald is the one that's talked about at the comedians table, with like respect and yeah, re- no he's revered. Him. Yeah, and he's very loved. He was very loved at the you time. You ever see the Bob Saget roast? I didn't see the. Did I see the roast? I don't think so. No. He like was told beforehand. They were like, he was like, what do I, what do I do here? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? And then they're like, they're like, just go hit him with the raunchiest, like dirtiest, <laughs> like most extreme jokes. So then he gets like a retirement joke book and just reads jokes off of that. <laughs> Completely bombs, but it's like the comedians on stage are hysterical because they they're the only ones who understand what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> so good. It's he was like, he was like, uh, I forgot I forgot who he was roasting. He was like, uh, blah 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 has the face of a flower, a cauliflower. So it's like it's like. <laughs> It's like terrible jokes like that. <laughs> well, everybody's doing a classic roast. Yeah. And like, I don't know. To me, I'm like that, that level of trolling I have to respect. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, he, he was a genius. You like the troll style of comedy, huh? Yeah, very much so. Do you like those like troll? Like, are you an Eric Andre fan? Yeah, I like Eric Andre. Yeah. Yeah. That sometimes I can see that and get a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. I think, I think that there's like. There is like a, a realm of troll that I think is just annoying, like the TikTok, like type oh troll, yeah, like, don't get me wrong, fuck like those pranksters, yeah, and yeah. Stuff. I, I hate, think I hate really the, uninspired. I hate the pranksters. I love, I, I love a good prank show or a prank. I don't like the YouTube prankster or the TikTok prankster. No, no, no. But I mean, Eric Andre himself had an entire prank movie. Um, I don't know if you saw that. I saw a bit of it. I don't yeah, know. not a fan of that. Stuff like that isn't. It's just too, too like too structured oh. you know like i feel like the whole like charm of like eric andre and like impractical jokers is like how unstructured it is and okay. how like like chaotic it can be at times so, so you like impractical jokers yeah i love him that... i've i've met a few of them honestly two uh i met Murr a few times behind plexiglass no <laughs> <laughs> uh, although he probably wishes <laughs> uh he like his like nephew went to my school which so. one's Murr? Trying, okay, he's the he bold were, one. Oh, okay, yeah, he's the one that left then. Yeah. Okay. No, no, he's not the one. Joe left. Oh, Joe left. Oh, so, oh the I know the bald one. The okay, I know. He's the, like kind of the butt of the jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's the bald, skinnier one. I guess. Yeah. Or scrawnier he, he's one. He's like low key, like. 
an asshole. Honestly. Really? From from what I've heard, like, was he an asshole to you? Not to me personally, but like, where'd my, you meet him? So at my high school, he was like his nephew was in my sister's grade, so oh, he would just like randomly show up, and I had like two real interactions with him. One, uh, my sister tried taking a picture with him, and he like got mad at her for wow. taking a picture. And then there's another one where I, I mean, I just like fucked with him. I, I like put my hand on his head, which is okay. I love that this started <laughs> off with you saying he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> no, and but suddenly listen, you're listen. telling me that you took an unsolicited picture of him and then put your hand on his head. <laughs> it sounds like he's a. Well, by the way, while he was just trying to pick up his niece, <laughs> nephew, nephew, nephew from school. All right. No, he. So he was at. He <laughs> the was way at, you framed that, bro. He was so. <clears throat> I, I went home from college to go to my sister's like high school graduation, right? And uh-huh. this dude was just there, and I was yeah, like, yeah. "All right, perfect. Like this is hype." And this is my chance to grab his <laughs> head. What the yeah, fuck yeah, is that about? Like, <laughs> get over here, bro. <laughs> nah, but like my sister tells me because she was at like the after party for this guy, and he was there, and. He, and like during the ceremony, because we went to a small school, he was like our our like dean or whatever was like named every single student individually and said something like kind about them, which oh. I thought was really cool. How many? Well, how big was your graduating class? Well, hers was like fifty or sixty. Oh, hers. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. So he like it, it took a while. It was a little <laughs> annoying, but like, I was like, damn, if I was part of this class, I would respect that. Like, okay. And I like you had to respect it. Like that's that's commitment to go through every student, even if you don't know them, mm-hmm. even if you don't fuck with them. Just be like, yo, this guy had like cool hair or whatever. Like, <laughs> but like he like went through all the students, and this dude just like Murr just goes up to my sister. He's like hammered at this like after party. Wow. He was just like. You know he doesn't actually fuck with y'all like that. <laughs> like, and my sister's like, "What?" And he was like, "He was like, he was like, yeah, that shit was so boring. I just went into the back and just stole some soda at, the, at this kid's car and just started pounding it with my girlfriend." Pounding soda? Is pounding soda? And then, and then my sister's friend apparently Where's was like, about that, us? My sister's friend was like, "That was my car, actually." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, she was telling me that I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> like, so Mur is a maybe, maybe an asshole. It, yeah. Although I'm gonna give him the pass on that one because it sounds like you guys are being pieces of crap. But, I wasn't. But he, was. he may at least be a soda thief, apparently, which is weird. Yeah, and I don't know. He gave me weird vibes. But yeah. Okay. So not a yeah. Joe. And then I met. I mean, not a Mur fan. I met. Uh, What's his face? Sal. Sal, okay. Kind of. Sal Volcano. Yeah, I like bumped into him at a hotel once. He's the slightly like stockier one, I guess. Yeah, I mean they all kind of. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) Which which was this? Which one was the one with the six pack? (laughs) Yeah. Like he he portrayed he he was a nice he was he was friendly like he probably just got off a flight so he did not want to interact with my. You saw him in an airport, you said? No, I saw him at a hotel like right when he arrived. So like, so like, and my parents were like harassing him. Oh no! So it was like it was pretty weird, but. He was nice. He, yeah, he was friendly. He okay. was... Um, that show is. I thought it would be the type of show that I would like, but it it cringes me out. I feel like really? bad for them being like putting themselves that in that show. situation. Wow. Because to, to me, like my favorite parts of that show are like the the when they have like presentations that the other people write, and like they have like cringy stuff written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, but to me, it's so good because it's like, I don't know. I'm like they they like. You know, the jokes are what what's written. So, yeah. like, these people are clearly, like, good comedy writers. Does any part of you ever want to, like, write stuff like that? Well, I mean... Not so much sketch stuff, but, like, maybe prank stuff or... I mean, I think it'd be cool. I think if I was on Impractical Jokers, I would be able to do it. But I don't think, like... I don't know. I mean, I don't think I would be able to just go out and do some shit like that right now. Like... How about not do it, but write, like, come up with the ideas for Yeah, I think? think that would be fun. What a dick thing to do is, like, I'm not going to do any of I, this, but I'm going to write it out and you guys go do I, it. I have a prank <laughs> that I've wanted to do for so long where it's, like, going on the subway. And, like, you know those, like, pole dancers on the subway? Yes. They're, they're, <laughs> um, I remember, God, on the first version of the, this podcast that um, isn't even available now is literally just me practicing with my friends. Um, me and my buddy, he... He's the one that put me on to that. It's called um, Showtime. <laughs> I swear to God. There's he's, a name for it. Yes, yes. All right. My God, this is bringing us... There, there, I've, I'm going to have people listening to this. I have listened for, for since way back then that are going to be cracking up, being like, Showtime! Showtime's back. Because he was like, yo, you know about Showtime? And I'm like, 
like like the like HBO and Showtime. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah sure. I, I I Showtime boxing show. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, the dance. I'm like, there's a dance called Showtime. He's like, it's a whole genre, son. You don't know. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. He goes, they yell it every time that they do a dance in the subways, you know. And I'm like, you talking about the fucking pole dancing and and flipping a Yankee hat up around and and sliding from the the handlebar. He's like, yeah, that's called Showtime. He's I'm like, how do you know that? He's like, they literally yell it before they Show start. Time. And I was like, maybe they're just yelling like, hey, it's Showtime. Yeah, exactly. They're not saying, hey, this is Showtime. Like, this is a genre. Like, this is the name. Like, if you go out and you're about to play a punk rock song on a stage, you don't yell punk rock and then fucking start playing the song. I mean, like some people do, but I mean, that's not what they mean, you know? Stand like, up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> stand up. So what's the deal with blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we don't do that. Like. He's like, no, but that's what it's called. And I'm like, no. And so on air, I Google it. And like, it's 100% called Showtime, like Showtime dancing or whatever. And now every time that I have to endure one of these shows on the subway, because I don't like it. I don't know who does like it. I've never seen yeah, someone. I don't think anyone's like, let's go. Yes, this is show. <laughs> no one has, put it say, whenever. Yeah, it, no one's it, filming it. Everybody's just like, God damn it, let me read it. It's only like the German tourist that has no <laughs> yeah, idea, yeah. where even black people are a novelty to him. He's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. and they dance for you? Okay, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, but no one, when, when the dude is in the middle with the boom box and his tank top and a hat that looks like it was kicked around for, for 40 years straight. No one responds to him yelling when he goes, showtime. No one goes, yes, it's showtime, baby. Yeah. Let's do this. But you will now, and I have cursed you, you will now notice whenever these guys enter the, the subway car yeah. and they're about to start dancing, you will now inevitably be unable to not hear them go, showtime, and then they start doing it. And they you go, know, yes, they do a weird <laughs> fucking, and then they get into it, yes. That's and then someone gets kicked in the face for no reason on the <laughs> well, side. So no, that's what my sketch. That's what I really want to do. Is I like, forgot we were talking about like this <laughs> sketch. I just completely hijacked that it's just like go, like go on like a subway and i would i would i would have to have like a lot of confidence <laughs> like a lot of liquid confidence be like, you do this is your mo <laughs> yeah. i'm learning okay. i'm an alcoholic <laughs> uh, no i would i would want to go in and just be like be like this is my first time <laughs> just like get up and just smack someone in the face like fall on my ass like <laughs> Just make a complete buffoon of myself. Oh, I think God. that would be so funny. That would take so much better. I know, because not oh, only do people yeah. hate those people, yeah, yeah. but you'd be like the worst guy. <laughs> I would want to like get one of my friends so I could like really deck them in the Like face. put a like, plant in there? That yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, that would be fucking hilarious. Like if you learned how to throw like a fucking kick and, and plant one on his face. What would make it great is that you are not black at all. You're this preppy yeah. Jewish yeah. kid that you said from fucking Virginia. <laughs> yeah. But now you know. You have to, the first thing you do when you go in there, you better yell out, Showtime! <laughs> This is my first showtime. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so. I I kind of want to see this now. To be honest with you. <laughs> well, if you want to help me make it, I. <laughs> if you want I me want no part of this. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking get it. I will watch it and, and I will even share it. But I don't want. I just told you I I cringe out very easily. Yeah, I mean that's why I haven't done it. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like it would be a funny sketch too, but like I mean, it's almost like a sketch that would have to take place in, in real. Yeah, like you'd yeah. still have to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I guess it would, there would be scripted <laughs> elements to it, but God, that's it's you. That's funny though. There's there's definitely something there, dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, as um, as we start wrapping this up, I I would be remiss if I let you go. Cause I, I read something that, uh, Oh, you know, Oh, remember I told you, <laughs> remember I told you that I had a moment when I was doing some research with you that, uh, about you that it, it actually did feel almost, it's the creepiest I ever felt doing research for a guest. I'll tell you why. Suddenly I found like, I don't know if it was a resume or something of yours, but it's I, online. Yeah, there's something of yours online where this is how I knew that you graduated from Tulane University. This is how I knew about Office Hours Comedy because you added as like your extra skills where or whatever. Where did you see that? <laughs> I got to take that down. Um, you, you, in there, you talk about how you uh, your some of your Maybe credits are LinkedIn? your it might have been or even something else. Uh, I think it was something specific for the film industry because you talk about um, your time as a production assistant on Action Planet on Discovery oh, Plus. Yeah, yeah. 
you talk about being a part of the Village Roadshow Company, and yeah. you read. Did you actually read scripts for Happy Madison? Is this real? Yeah, yeah. I so you're not lying on resumes. Good, good no, for I you. Don't lie on <laughs> um, what was that? I saw Happy Madison in your resume, and I, I and I. And by the way, I can. It, I love that you're like. How did you find this? I typed your name into Google. <laughs> yeah, I need to start. I need to start being more careful. But. Um, it's funny because my name is like Will Bryan and there's like 47 other ones before I pop up. So it's like, do you know what the Mandy network is? No, I don't. You're on it. Oh, geez. <laughs> Wait, actually, no, I do. I think I've been using that to find jobs. Okay. Mandy.com. Yeah. I get emails from them every day. There you go. Don't sign up. for This that. is also where I saw big shark Tommy Wiseau, um, okay. pop up for Word. you. Um, and then you have various uh, videographer credits for things that uh, you can't talk about because you have NDAs. So we're definitely going to get into that right now. <laughs> and <laughs> um, yeah, and then I saw the offers office hours comedy, bachelor's degree from Tulane University. Um, your dad left you guys when you were three. You never <laughs> recovered from that. No, yeah. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so I, it, it, th I was reading this and I was like, I, this is the most I've ever learned about someone. And it's funny because I only go I, the only reason I Googled you is because I didn't really know anything else about you um, uh, from like your Instagram or anything like that. Um, and our conversation that when we first met was like almost a month ago at this point. Yeah. And I swear to God, yeah. I was like, what the, which one was he? What did we talk about? I was you the know? really funny one. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one there without a job. I had nothing going for me. <laughs> Dude, I remember you as like, well, I know he's like recently to Bushwick and I'm like, did I just invite him to like be friends? I with know you were like, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> the episode of title is going to be Liam needs a friend. Like, I was like, damn, really? Like I have nothing going for <laughs> I was like, I think he thought I was the dude that was on fucking Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, like, yeah, you, you know what? Where is that guy? He would be great. I was like, yeah, I've seen Kelly Clarkson a few times. <laughs> That's, it's funny. I told my girl about the guy that is like serves as the hype man for Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. She's like, oh, you're going to have him on your show? And I'm like, I don't know. He seems too big time. But I'm having this dude, Liam, though. Like, yeah. he, he agrees. But, I, but I did legit. Like, I'm too intimidated to ask him because to me, like, you have a real job in comedy, you know? Like, I. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I mean, still he on the come like up. He would do it. I know that's the thing too. But I'm still at the point where I'm only now realizing how down people are to do this. Yeah, it's fun. I that's what I'm getting, and I'm I'm getting a little bit more uh, confidence in it now. Uh, you're probably by the time this is out, you're probably going to be I don't know, maybe like the in total. I still have less than ten guests ever on this show. Oh wow! But I'm hitting this stride right now. Like I don't know if you saw my calendar outside, but like in the month of February alone, I, I had probably six different interview guests. Um, okay. Um. And so I used so for someone that did like a year of solo episodes mostly, the past six weeks or so have been like guest, 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 guest. And I've and I told you I've got episodes banked from here on out where the next month is guest, 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 guest. You know. So I've always um I guess it's part of I feel like doing what the types of things we do, like I'm in comedy, you like sketch and film and stuff like that. There's always going to be a level of imposter syndrome in what we yeah. do where we don't feel like we're like, should even be where we are doing what we are. So I have it in a lot in pretty much every aspect of my life. And it, it comes in. Oh, is that a spider? Yeah. What the hell? Wow. What are you doing? Why do you bring in spiders? Are you, I don't know, dude, I'm, I'm low key a bug magnet. I, that's so weird i've never had a spider i've never seen a spider in here and then you're sitting down and it's right in front of you i have, I have so many bad experiences with bugs dude it's really crazy. i new orleans dude they fly their like cockroaches <laughs> i've had cockroaches <laughs> climb on me in my sleep i've had nightmares about cockroaches <laughs> probably every night that was so random i've never I seen had a spider fleas once in my room fleas yeah that was the worst not even bed bugs, fleas. Fleas, yeah. Wow. A, a full rodent must have died in there, and I never found it. Jesus. Yeah. In but, your dorm room, or? Uh, no, my apartment in New Orleans. You lived like off campus then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We like it was like right after a hurricane. I got back with like my my girlfriend at the time, and we she like crawls into the bed. And, and then we were like so hyped to finally be back in New Orleans. And yeah. then she was like, something just bit me. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, no. And then we realized the entire ground was just covered <gasps> in fleas. How do you, what do you do at that point? We like ran to the bathroom and just like, just like stood there for maybe like two hours. Oh, oh we were just panicking. Like, <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, and we grabbed the. the, the, the no, I called like everyone I knew. And, I mean, we, we got it. I got an exterminator. Okay. But, okay. Like, it was crazy. My. 
my landlord at the time, like, I texted her. I was like, hey, I'm at a friend's house. I don't have, like, any clothes with me. Like, please, like, send an exterminator ASAP. And then she was like, I'm in the house right now. There's nothing. I was like, what do you mean you're in the house right how, first? How did you get how in? You, right? yeah. <laughs> I was like, get out of my room. <laughs> That's so weird. I've been watching you every night. Like, you yeah, dude, fun. she was like... First week moving there, she like she was like, I'm going to buy you a trash can, Liam. And I was like, what do you mean you're buying me a trash She was like, yeah, your room's so messy. I was like, I'm in class right now, man. Get what? out of my room. First of all, did you not use a trash can? I had a trash can. I probably had like a few like clothes on the floor. I don't know. <laughs> she was like, you need a trash can. <laughs> yeah, was like, she was oh, like making weird. a joke about messy my room up was. I was like, dude, get out get of my out. room. Yeah, that's weird, dude. All right. <laughs> I wish I would have known about your weird landlord earlier. I would have asked you more weird questions. That's so uh, creepy, dude. <laughs> yeah, it really was. <laughs> I see where you moved finally. Can you talk a little bit about um, what what is the Village Road Show? So they're like a, they're like a studio. They did a, like the Joker movies, like Mad Max. Oh uh, wow! Okay. Matrix is their biggest one. I'm so stupid that when I read Lego Movie, I read Vill- R- Village Roadshow, and I thought you were a part of that show that goes around uh, looking <laughs> no. at people's antiques and telling them how much they're worth. And I realized that's Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, no, we're, I'm not that. And you know what's funny? What you actually did was way cooler. Yeah. And I'm bummed yeah. out. I'm I like, know. No, that would have been a better story. I was going to ask you, like, what's the most expensive thing you've ever <laughs> like, seen? Now I'm like, all right, so Happy Madison, Lego. All right, uh, talk about that, I guess. Whatever. No, I just like re- I just read <laughs> scripts and review them. Is, is that... That sounds like a really cool gig, but does Yo, it? It get, is cool. Okay, yeah. did it ever? It never got like fucking. Oh, another script. This is mundane, or. Uh, I mean, I mean, it wasn't like like you were always excited to get a new script, but also like you were excited because the last script was always terrible. Oh, so, yeah. So like most of the scripts that you, that you do cover, John, are ass. Damn. And I actually just saw one of them is being turned into a movie. I don't know if I'm allowed to say which one. Maybe, maybe so since you want to be in the industry, let's not. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, not shit on a future. I movie. do not like that script. Really, that's <laughs> yeah, funny. I, so uh, I don't know if, how well that will do, but it's like got a big cat. It's it's crazy. Jeez, I, maybe off cat, may, off off air. Yeah, this well, is gonna be the first time. <laughs> Because I always hate when I listen to a podcast and they're like, tell me off air. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> so I finally get to do it. Tell me off air. Tell me off air. But yeah, I have a coworker that like did something like this. And she read the script for um, They Cloned Tyrone before oh, it was ever that's made. A good movie. And she talked. I want to see it because she said that it's like the greatest script that like she ever read as part of doing that job. And that yeah. the other people that read it, uh, like also who had been doing it longer, like said the same thing. Yeah, no, it's, that was a good You saw the movie? Yeah, I really yeah, like I haven't seen it yet, but I do want to see it's it. It's on Netflix, I think. Yeah, it is, it is, for sure. Um, so how do you get your script into Happy Madison to be even be read by someone like you? Is that hard? So I didn't work directly for Happy Madison. I worked for... Get Vill- a little bit closer to that. I worked for Village Roadshow. Okay. Uh, it's just like one of the guys at the... like. Uh, Happy Madison, like one, the guy who ran their TV department, was like best friends with a lot of the people there, and they knew I was into comedy, so they okay. they would like. So I, I just like asked them. I was like, "Hey, can I read some Happy Madison scripts?" Like oh, I don't cool, think cool. I was supposed to be doing that, but nice. <laughs> uh, they just like th- kept throwing me a bone, uh, and it was cool. I mean, honestly, like most comedy scripts are terrible. Oh man, which it gave me a lot of confidence. Right, like yeah. I was like, "All right, I'm way funnier than this," mm-hmm. um, but like. It's painful, dude. Like, damn. Because you would know, like, within like the first page, whether or not it's a good script. Right. Like, I would read some terrible jokes. But do you read the whole thing? You have to, yeah. How long would it take you to get through a script? Not that long. It depends on what it is. If it's a pilot, probably like twenty minutes. Oh, okay. If it's a uh, like feature, I'm a slow reader, low key. So like, maybe like a day. But like, realistically, I could knock out a, a full coverage in like two hours. With screenplays, the the general idea is a page per minute right mm-hmm. so so yeah so a but pilot, it doesn't take you a minute to read right yeah. yeah so like for a pilot you're reading something that i guess is between 20 or 30 pages yeah and feature film you're reading maybe at about 90 pages give or take yeah yeah, yeah. some are longer like really long yeah because everyone thinks i also had to read a few books too which which is brutal that sounds brutal to me i'm not a big book guy yeah i mean some of them are good i mean i like i like reading books like don't get me wrong i just finished a book like yesterday but uh, I don't know. I 
it, it's weird because it, because I also was was faced with the dilemma because I was like I just read an entire book I want something to come out of this <laughs> but I'm also like I'm also like this is not a good this is like fruitless. this wouldn't do that well as a movie like so oh wait like oh books that whether or not they should be turned into something mm-hmm. oh, yeah interesting. yeah they were already like published books yeah, yeah it's just like whether or not this would do good as a TV show or movie huh damn um you like doing that you said yeah I love doing that. how'd you get that. Uh, it was an internship. Yeah. I just like while you were at Tulane. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is that how you got the gig with this uh, the Discovery Plus show too? No, that was just a PA gig. Okay. What's uh, that like then? It's 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 really not. That what does a production assistant do? It depends on the set. For that, I was just like running a, like data. So I was just like okay. I would just drive to set in my friend's car, which was like an hour or two away, and mm-hmm. then I would pick up like a uh, like a hard drive drive it back to campus, upload it to like offices in New York and then like email with that, like coordinate with okay. them. And then that was really it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess, I guess to, to an outsider looking in like me, the, the title of production assistant sounds a lot cooler than I guess what your job Well, it depends on is. what it is. Like you can like, oh, like, there's different, like people like product, like can assist in like any way, like being a production assistant is basically just doing whatever you're told. So like mm-hmm. it can be anything from just running coffee to like helping manage like, crew on an actual set right so like it depends how you're utilized yeah it depends yeah um what so as as uh pretty much what i want to finish off with is you're here in new york mm-hmm. i'm guessing it's because you want to pursue all of this yeah. stuff what uh not to sound as loaded as this is probably going to come off what are the goals then what are what do you want right, to get out of this right now i want to uh write as much as i can film as much as i can make as many connections as i can uh i really like new york so it would be cool to get like a legit job here Mm -hmm. like within like tv or film um i i have a lot of development experience so that's probably the realm that i would want to go into Mm -hmm. uh if not being like an agent or something um and yeah just kind of like grind that out for like a year or two and if doesn't work i'll just move to la which is <laughs> i have can like I, I think i could do well in la but yeah i'm just not ready for that right now why do you think you're it's not... just it's just such a grind la and, yeah more so than you think it would it's more so than here yeah how come it's just like you're really in the business there mm, like I get a, that. like your whole life is the business and like everyone like i talked to when i was there was just like I love New York and I wish I was there, but everything's mm. here. Like yeah. you have to come here. And yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. like, I've always wanted to live here. So I'm giving it a shot while I still can, while I'm still young. Check it off the list. Yeah, exactly. I Cause I feel like I would regret it. Cause like, I know like if I moved to LA and I got a job, it, that would be the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't really have any breaks. Yeah. So I just, I mean, hopefully I get something like that here. And I enjoy life a little bit more. But. It's definitely possible. Hey, we we're, we're, there's more and more studios popping up. I mean, we, yeah. Astoria has the Kaufman Studios that are that are yeah, that true. are huge. And like there's, it's it there's more. I actually right across the street or like diagonally across the street from here, CBS Films Bull mm-hmm. on, on like a weekly. Not I, I I know that we just completely obliterated <laughs> network television. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, like there are, there are more opportunities than there were before. Um. I guess the good thing is that what I'm seeing from you is you I you have a strong resume as I've seen. <laughs> so that's good. You have a, so. a strong um you have a degree from a strong institute. Yeah. Um and uh I don't know. I think I think that you're at least you're a young guy that's at least got the the right credits to be on the right path. So I appreciate that. Now it's let's see uh if you um stop being lazy and stop being drunk all the time <laughs> and maybe put it into action. Yeah. It took me like 36 years to be productive in anything, so I mean and I'm still not getting paid for any of it, so <laughs> you have, happens, you have plenty of time, man. Yeah. Um before we go, um, do you want to maybe plug your socials, your YouTubes? Um, I I'm, I will say I genuinely got laughs out of a bunch of his videos. However, I also got some what the fuck moments from some of your <laughs> videos, which I think are equally as valuable to people. I think, <laughs> um, yeah, I think and you know what? Like, there's a there's an audience out there for it. So yeah, if you want to plug uh, your socials, your YouTubes, um, shout out New Boredom on uh, YouTube. Uh, I should be making some more posts this year. Uh, 
I plan on filming some stuff in the next few months. Uh, Get on YouTube Shorts too. I think it'll yeah, help out yeah, your page. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm start doing TikToks and Shorts as well. I got a script. I I think I'm ready to film. Nice. So, yeah, peep me on there. What? So, hey, what's your TikTok? Uh, new boredom. It's all oh, it's new boredom on TikTok and on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I still have to log into that. Great. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, because I know your Instagram is Liam Core. Liam Strominger is uh, oh Liam dot it, it's more of a private page so never mind forget that I don't said follow that, that. <laughs> I won't accept you um, uh, but so new boredom on uh, on YouTube. TikTok and YouTube yeah it should be me with a money spread it's like fake money got it I'm not pretentious <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just a troll uh, dude I want to thank you for coming yeah through, dude, dude thank you for having me this was a lot of fun um I uh. I, I watched all of your videos because I was like, I need something to talk to him about. And uh, obviously, I, this, these two, we've been talking for two hours and it kind of flew by. Oh, damn. So, yeah, I know, right? You know, yeah. I, it, it's always, we always talk longer than people realize we do here. But uh, I appreciate you, dude, and uh, I look forward to seeing some more weird ass fucking videos. Yeah, I appreciate you. it, man. Uh, and uh, more in the future. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, Thank man. you.